go live there. You are live. Awesome. Well, welcome to the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yep, we are here with uh, Fawn Baker and our guest, uh, Laura. Was Lara. Laura or Lara? Lara. Lara. What's your last name, Lara? Kretler. Kretler. Mm-hmm. Well, it's great to meet you. We're meeting you. Lara today. Um, yeah. Been here talking, catching up. Been talking about our technology a little bit today. All kinds of upgrades still happening. Yep. Yep. Spending the morning getting everything together again. Yep. It it looks even cooler in person than it does on the internet. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. We're driving a mothership over here. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, So today we have. Lara is our first female guest. I just realized. It's an honor. Yeah. We I mean, I at breakfast we were talking about how like sometimes I forget that I'm uh <clears throat> you know, a girl in a boys' club as far as like being tactic collector goes. Um and it, it just hadn't even occurred to me that we hadn't had any female guests on the show yet. You know, <laughs> we've talked to some of our friends, but not really used to the first episodes or anything. Yeah. So welcome. This will be like, Thanks. Our, sorry, Jordan. This is going to be our first girl power episode. Oh, no, it's all right. That's all right. I get, I get I like the it. feeling Jordan's like going to hang. He's not one of those toxic masculinity dudes. He's, nope. he's cool. I, I always, down. I enjoy feminine. Yeah. He has scare down. He gets mistaken for a pretty lady. <sighs> it's true. I think I need to see it before I leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's I definitely mean, true. The locks are becoming like flow. They're going to be turning into dreadlocks soon. <laughs> You're ready. <laughs> Ready once back. it gets a little once it gets a bit longer yeah yeah definitely i, I think your that. hair is long enough now but i don't think you could like juggalo not too much no i i still don't think uh sorry i'm messing with Fawn's mic because i can't hear her in my headphones at all okay it's because i'm getting ground out by the furnace uh, is that what's going on here i'll turn that off in a second here but uh yeah i don't think i'll look like a juggalo either yeah i think it's definitely long enough you won't look like a juggalo growing up in michigan that was one of my fears. If you do anything crazy or extreme with your hair, you definitely don't want to look like a juggalo. <laughs> At least I didn't. I, like, if you do want to look like a juggalo, that's fine. That's, on that's you. not yeah. my life choice, I, though. You should have seen him when I first, I don't, I feel like we talked about this in the last, last podcast, or I might have had a conversation with someone somewhere else. But uh, back in, when I first did my dreadlocks in high school, I just like, I waxed them up, like, from like, Hair that was like down to like my chin, maybe. You waxed them even. I, oh god, oh, I didn't know shit. From the start. I didn't know shit That's about dreadlocks. They were so disgusting bad. from day one. Ugh. That's yeah. what the wax from day means. one. So what happened was I probably had those for like, I don't know, half a year, and like it was just disgusting. I like I just didn't like the feeling of having wax in my hair, but it was like it was dread wax. You know, it was like your it was stuff you were supposed to do to it but i was like i just way too much product and stuff i don't need any of that and then You'd i shaved get hot I sh- and your collar would get all waxy and gross yeah right right <laughs> exactly disgusting so i shaved that off and then yeah grew them back and had them for eight years but cut them off grew back again but when i grew them back from a bald head i was totally uh um uh, sorry we have so much feedback on this right now um uh, Oh yeah, they, I mean they were like this big, and then they were like this big, you know. So they just went from. So you nubs, had like itty bitty like, little right, twists right away. Right, off the right away, I separated them. Like when someone my hair was weird. Okay. Um, really short. Yeah, I waited till mine was like well past my shoulders before I put it in dreads the second time. I, I did the same. I, I mean, the only reason I cut my dreads off the first time is because I wanted to get my head tattoo. To, to be fair, I like went home and I'm like, I'm getting my head tattoo. I made the appointment and I went home and I like cut the one side out where the tattoo was going to go. And then I looked in the mirror. I was like, oh, no, I'm not. That's not me at all. So I just chopped them all off. <laughs> like I couldn't do like the one side. It's just like, hmm. Yeah. That's not me. Yeah. I so, did, I did so one I, side for a long time. I grew, I grew them back with the intention of a mohawk. So I kind of. Okay. I've always wanted a mohawk my whole life. Yeah. And I've got the dready mohawk. I love when I see other people with a dready mohawk because it's not every day, but like when we see each other, it's like, I see you, Leia. <laughs> I see you. All right, though, let's get down. Uh, well, let's let's talk about um, Lara uh, a little bit. So, Fawn, let's talk about what made uh, us decide to have Lara on here. Like, oh well, you have she has her wonderful Instagram. 
Oh, which I've been creeping on her. Well, okay. So Laura's Instagram page is Tattoo Doula. And it's just kind of like, just the title in itself is kind of similar to like the motivations for even having this show, first of all. Exactly. Right. So I, I love just that to like, that. to see that like, and, and I, I didn't, I did we met for today for the very first time. Um, so I only know Lara from, from following one another on Instagram. Um, but like, you've definitely been tattooed by some heavy hitters. Mm-hmm. You've got a pretty incredible collection. Um, so I feel like you're, you're definitely equally as qualified to talk about this kind of stuff that Jordan and I are. Thanks. So, but I, I feel like just similar motivations with like, our online presence kind of, I, I, I hope, I figured that it would lead to some pretty like natural conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it yeah. did at breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a good talk at breakfast. Yeah. And right away when you Jordan got into it, we started talking today. and I was like, oh, we got to get that on the podcast. But, but now, of course, I don't remember what we were talking about. I know, right. <laughs> but I do remember we were kind of discussing, you know, just like the, the idea of the tattoo doula and what mm-hmm. made you come up with that. And you were talking about like the death doula. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So a doula, let's, talk, yeah, let's talk about what a doula is first. So what you typically think of a doula is a childbirth or, you know, labor and delivery doula, which is someone who is basically the pregnant mom's best friend and kind of helps them through from, you know, or pretty early on through all the way through actually having the baby in the hospital or at home. And um, I had a doula and she was amazing. My birth plan didn't go as planned, but she still helped me labor at home for 30 hours until finally we realized, no, we have to go to the hospital for this kid. And they had to do a C-section, which was very traumatic because I have a very heavily tattooed stomach. And I was like, please do not hurt my tattoos. And the surgeon like looked at my stomach and looked at me and he was kind of a cool dude. He had like a Kanga hat on. Mm-hmm. He was kind of a cool dude surgeon, you know? And he's like, I can do this. I'm just going to have to close you manually. And I remember like after they took her out and everything and they were, <coughs> he was st- stitching me pers- with these tiny, precise hand stitches. And usually they just staple you shut after a C-section and the nurses were all complaining. They were like, why is he taking so long? What is he doing? But he, there is a hair's breadth between my low down tattoo and my low stomach tattoo mm-hmm. and he went right he did not touch my tattoos he, it was precision awesome yeah awesome I always like talking to, to clients about that like when when I see somebody who has been in like a, a traumatic car accident mm-hmm. or something where mm-hmm. like they had to be fixed on the fly and the tattoo <laughs> right. was not of concern saving their life was sure. okay I'll let that pass but when we've got like scheduled procedures or cosmetic things or, or any of the countless other things where you see where they'll like misline up mm-hmm. and it's like, well, I mean, to me, like show I a little think, precision, I would think right. that the tattoo would help said surgeon line up all things. the capillaries and everything more closely to help you have a better heal. Like, it seems like the lining up the tattoo would only help lining up the tissue under the tattoo you would think you know what i mean if so i'm care. always a little bit disappointed <laughs> or when maybe, it's like or way maybe off it's, and it'll be gathered at one end or maybe or like, that's where some of like the flaws come in a little bit where they realize that like it's or not flaws necessarily or it's like that hard to do that so it's like it makes it look more off when it is like that if you were to do that because that naturally your skin they might you know to get it perfect like that might be I've never sewn anybody up though. So I, I don't know. Ta- I can't, I can't talk, but I haven't guess, sewn anyone up either. My honest guess <laughs> is that they just don't even notice. They're just doing their job. You know what I mean? They're just putting you back together and they don't really notice that. I, I've n- almost never had a doctor comment on my tattoos. They just don't notice it. It seems like, or if they do, they just, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Maybe they're trained not to ask. Yeah. I don't know. What are they going to do? Or hmm. sit and buggy about it? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I always wonder with, uh, well, not wonder, but the skin cancer thing is always a thing. You know, you say you're getting a whole sleeve, you know, this has got nothing to do with cutting people open, but just more medical things when it comes to the tattoos and mm-hmm. how a doctor might react to tattoos or something like that. Like, you know, what are your, what are your opinions? Like if someone has like, say, you know, they covering like moles or covering like you know, marks that could be melanoma mm-hmm. later. Do you try to look for those and see if that's a thing or you just I definitely point right things out. Uh, I mean, anytime you've got a mole or an irregularity, you should work around it. You should dance a- around. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I honestly haven't really encountered like a lot of like, like red flag issues. I mean, 
in reality, if there was a lesion or broken skin, that area can't be tattooed anyways. So like any of the signs of skin cancer or anything, that would, that would disqualify that area from being tattooed, period, in my book. Um, but like after talk, like I've got a few clients that are medical doctors and after talking to them, they're like, people with tattoos take better care of their skin. People mm-hmm. with tattoos have less skin cancer because they're using they stay out of the sun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've got all this time and money in their tattoos. So now they're actually like conscious of their skin and keeping it healthy. Producer number one's going crazy over there. I often say that my tattoos saved me from skin cancer. Cause I was a little bit of a sun worshiper back in the day. And just lived to like slather myself with like, you know, whatever and lay out in the sun and get, and I, and being as fair as I am, I would always go red first and get sunburned and mm-hmm. then it would tan and ugh, like, why would I put myself through that? Yeah. But as soon as I started collecting serious art, I, I stay out of the sun now. Yeah. You know? During the so, summer, I probably carry, saved my life. I carry the Neutrogena spray stuff. Mm-hmm. Usually it's either in my backpack or my car at all times. Yeah. Just cause like sometimes I won't even know I'm going to be in the sun. Right. So it's, it's nice to have, but I'm super fair. So I've always been mindful of the sun, but it's crazy how much more mindful I am. Yeah. I've got thousands and thousands uh, yeah. and thousands of dollars <laughs> in my ink. Like, it's like, you know, that really hurt. And I, as much as I want to spend the day with Adam, I don't want to spend the day with Adam. Yeah. <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but, but I think, you know, I've, I've read things. I, I feel like it's pretty inconclusive, but I feel like there are a lot of studies going on about um, how being heavily tattooed affects your immune system. Hmm. And, um, you know, essentially it makes your immune system stronger. It makes it work harder. Yeah. It, you know, yep. your, your body, your lymphatic system knows yeah, what to do with any true. impurities. Like, you know, it, it's all still kind of like inconclusive and they're just starting to study those things. But could, could you imagine if like being tattooed head to toe just makes you like, don't want to say invincible but like a little bit like after all that pain you've gone through that would be great to be like uh i've already been vaccinated by tattooing i think i think it makes you immortal (laughs) i do too that would be cool i think it gives you superpowers once you have a certain number of tattoos you can't be killed by ordinary means yeah yeah i mean right that is a that's a fact yeah what those means are to be found but we don't know you're not going to be killed by them you know that number of tattoos I, well, my number keeps getting smaller, so it's like I think it nachos. starts with it's seven. Like I think it starts with together. seven, and every That's every exponential tattoo. from mm. there. Okay. <laughs> seven, yeah. seven tattoos. Okay. All right. That's when that's when they begin. The superpowers they start. All right. All right. All right. What superpowers would you have if your tattoos could give you a superpower? What would it be? besides robot legs. there's like realistic ways to look at this and then there's not realistic ways yeah like, i would i would really love to like have the power of like creating webs like a spider or like hmm. eight arms but i don't think tattooing is going to give me like even if tattooing could give you superpowers i don't think it's going to give you eight arms or ra- the ability to shoot webs you just need to be <laughs> bitten by a radioactive spider and you'll be right set. there you go that's what bugs me about peter parker though it's like he can't even really shoot webs they're like it's, mechanical webs yeah. it's like come on like i thought that spider bit you but if I could do that, I don't mean to get off topic here, but I would like build a city. I would I would build a house out of it. I would like, you know, you could like put sticks up. You create the best foundation out of like spider web. It'd be the strongest stuff on earth. Hmm. Hmm. I had no idea. I had no idea you felt so you'd come over. About you'd come inside webs, my house Jordan. and it'd just be like webs. Like I'm yeah, just like a I spider no den. I'd, I'd pop no my head out of like way. some little hole. <laughs> like a super cozy yeah right i could see, I could see it. i just got my eight arms fully tattooed <laughs> you make a sick hammock that was how i circled around <laughs> yeah, can right. you imagine how many computer screens would be around the hammock how terrifying would that be if i came down this these stairs from the ceiling and like, came around oh man we got way off topic already you almost got us back to tattoos jordan almost that was a valiant effort. Okay, so to bring it back, <laughs> let's talk about a realistic way you could get a superpower from being tattooed. I don't know. I, I said I said what I had to say. Fawn, what would you say? Hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of like real mental fortitude and things like that that come along oh, with yes. being tattooed. Like, well, I don't mean like the... super realistic though. We can also go like spiritual. Know, we can well, we can also go like 
superpowers like you know like make you fly or some shit like i just meant more realistic than a spider i'd want to time travel to like two hours <laughs> after being tattooed <laughs> can, I, can we do that can we just time travel just like all right well here we go Zzz, time travel eight hour jump so you get can tattooed that? enough that you can just skip time Ooh. time travel at the end of your session. That's what I'm talking can you about. jump forwards and backwards <clears throat> That's up to you. I want to. I want to jump forward. To, then backwards. that's up to the one getting the the powers. Okay. All right. But all right. I really like where you were going on the realistic side. Like too. if I could jump eight or ten hours, I feel like that would be great. <clears throat> but like, if I could just jump right. major amounts of so time, like, what would I do with that? So the tattooing would start it, and then you'd learn it from there. So mm. like, oh, now I got the superpower. Now I could figure out meditate to ten hours from now. That'd be great. Hmm. achievable superpowers <laughs> <laughs> i would want to fly i used i used to have these very vivid dreams as a kid of like having a magic carpet basically that i kept in my room and anytime i wanted to go out i would just open my window and fly and i would like fly up above my neighborhood and fly just all around my town and i think it would be really wicked if nice. you really could do that nice have you ever had a lucid dream where you could fly i mean probably those were pretty yeah. close to it like were they you... were so real yeah oh yeah that's awesome so real Anytime I learn to fly in like a lucid dream or anything, I, everybody cool. tries to kill me. Everything oh tries God. to take me down. Like, really? like, you're not supposed to be, shouldn't be flying here. Hmm. The guy knows, he knows he's awake. And they try to get me. That's crazy. So that it's always, it's, so whenever I have a lucid dream, it's a, like everything kind of turns against me. To like, oh. It's like, oh, we figured it out. Okay, well. Oh, I keep bumping this camera. Hmm. Our technology's in the way. Yeah, I don't know why that one keeps bumping off. Demo mode. It's all right. We're still learning, guys. We're still learning. We're and I'm sure a ton of you are just looking through the Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> which is cool, too. Our one viewer, Ernog Johnson. I, I forgot to go live, actually. So we just now. Thanks, Jux to Joe. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about your tattoo history. Okay. Who all have you been tattooed by? Um, so throw, I, throw your list out there. Okay. So I started getting tattooed by Conan Lee when he was really young. Do you guys know him at all? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar. In my mind, he's, you know, like really come up and he's huge, but I mean, not everybody knows him. He's in Indianapolis now. Nice. He was in Fairfield. And um, I met him when he was very young and um, his portfolio was more of his fine art, like his paintings mm -hmm. than his tattoos. His fine art's got like a really like like an art nouveau feel to it it's mm -hmm. got like swoops and swirls like you would see in like the 1920s he it's loves very, like alphonse like Mucha and movies. yeah that my my corset on my back is um was conan interpreting alphonse Mucha's style into a i could a corset. absolutely see that now that you say it for sure and um it was unlike anything i'd ever seen like when i looked in his book i mean it was just like like real art like painterly you know strokes of the tattoo and it was really hard to find tattooers that tattooed like that what what years are we talking um i like first, early 2000s yeah early to like 2000 2001 yeah, it was yeah. really hard at that time to find a tattooer that tattooed like a painter mm -hmm. in any kind of way yep and so once i saw it i was like that's it i don't ever want to be tattooed by anyone else and so i got I went to him for, um, the first tattoo I went to him for was a word down my back <laughs> uh, that I got with a, someone I was in a relationship with and uh, am no longer, and that tattoo has been covered up, but the word was fate. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like fate is what brought me to Conan, literally, because that just set me on this tattoo journey because I went in, my after I got the word down my spine, which he gave me a little advice about, but he did pretty much give me what I asked for, what we asked for. But the next time I went to him, <laughs> I asked him for a little mermaid about this big on my hip. And he said, no, I won't do that. I won't put that on you. No. And I was like, what do you mean? And he, he started, he spent an hour with me just talking to me about the flow of anatomy and the curve of a woman's body and how just you want a bigger piece and you want it to follow the curves of your body. You don't want it just to sit on your hip like a sticker. And he just opened my mind so much. And I was like, yep, I trust you. Let's do this. And so we went from like this to just a consult, him drawing and sketching, and then me coming back and getting a full, you know, 
across my entire lower stomach mermaid, just to, sitting like, right on that body, right. That fit my body that just sat right on that curve. And, and let me tell you when <laughs> 15 years later, when I got pregnant and had my daughter, that tattoo <laughs> went through its paces, but because of how he drew it to the anatomy, it grew perfectly with the pregnancy and then has gone back down again, pretty much perfectly. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And like I said, the C-section scar came in right under it. So that didn't hurt it either. Oh yeah. There she is. My mer belly. Nice. So yeah, he just, he drew it on and then tattooed it, but it just looks like watercolor, you know, long before people started doing like trendy watercolor tattoos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. She doesn't oh, yeah. look quite like that anymore. She's a little, she's been, like I said, she went through some changes. <laughs> That's one of the things I like to talk about with um, a lot of my collectors. It's like, you know, even with, even with men whose bodies go from like super fit and like bodybuilder types, mm -hmm. like sometimes like they put body. weight on mm -hmm. or sometimes it's the other way around. Yeah. And that like the consideration of like drawing things to fit the muscles or mm -hmm. to fit how the body moves and flows. When you consider your tattoo designs like that, no matter how the body changes, the tattoo is going to change with the exactly. body. It's you all just organic. slap it on somewhere and it's like going against whatever part that it's on. Mm -hmm. Well, any change, it's going to look even more awkward than it already looks. Yeah. So there's a lot of magic in like placement working yeah working with the the organic natural flow of the body because then as your body changes the tattoo just grows and changes with you mm -hmm. there's really a lot of magic in that and that's what makes tattoos stand the test of time and yeah you know yeah so this awesome. was um this was my second tattoo yeah this was my second tattoo from conan my second big one and um you know i said just do the whole back if you want and he chose to do just kind of the lower two thirds um but it was i wanted a corset and um he wanted to do something alphonse muka inspired and he sketched a couple of different versions and i just fell in love with this one and um he wanted to leave the holes of the corset blank but i insisted they be gems because he had been doing these gorgeous jewelry tattoos mm -hmm. again just so ahead of his time i mean no one was doing jewelry tattoos back then so i said i want gems like you're doing nice. and um i think it makes it i love it yeah, and then it, the side awesome. pieces do wrap around to the front that was fun um and so i do have like the the curls of the side pieces like all the way in the front of my ribs but it was it was a really it was a big commitment of time and pain and blood <laughs> did you know what you were getting into when you committed to your back piece um not really but i knew i loved it and mm -hmm. i knew that like every tattoo i got made me feel more like myself and mm -hmm. um like i just i loved everything about it so i was i was ready and I love it. It's, I'm still never seen a tattoo quite like it. I mean, it's just, it's not really a type, you know, mm -hmm. it's right. just it's really unique. Awesome. Yeah. Well, one of the things you said is that you, you and he were pulling inspiration from, um, like jewelry, yeah. our new boat jewelry. Yeah. Um, one of the things I really like about pulling inspiration from things like jewelry and sculpture and carvings, like I spend a lot of time in cemeteries as well. Like if you can look at antique jewelry and like old architecture, there's, there's just a language to all those shapes, you know, like they all have purpose, but mm -hmm. they all have such beautiful flow and they make things look timeless. And they yeah. make things look elegant. Um, I'm just, I'm just drawn to all of those shapes, whether we're talking like structured geometric shapes, like cut stones. And then the, like, Oh, I want to call them like buttresses that come out like in architecture. Mm -hmm. That's what it would be. But, but in like the prongs that set stones, like some of those sometimes are even carved and like yeah. each, each piece and angle is considered to be beautiful. Like yeah. if you're going to take the time to make it and carve it by hand, you might as well make every angle beautiful and with purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of those things I really like about old architecture and old jewelry and you don't see it a lot outside of those two places. So mm -hmm. it's really cool to, you know, hear that specifically that's where you were pulling mm -hmm. inspiration out for such a big, a big piece of your body. It's yeah. like those dainty little delicate, beautiful things that most of the time people overlook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we did that. And then immediately after we finished that, um, 
you know, he and I had traveled a lot together. We had spent a lot of time together, not just tattooing, but going to conventions mm-hmm. and, you know, traveling and all that. And, and so during those conversations, we talked about favorite books and the C.S. Lewis Chronicles of Narnia were always like my favorite books growing up. Those seven books, they're written for children, but there's so much spirituality and depth in them too. And um, some of which I don't really go for, but they're great stories. Just yeah. And the main character Aslan is more than just a lion. It's, mm-hmm. it's like the divine in leonine form. Right. And so I knew I wanted that tattoo. I didn't know where I thought maybe on one of my arms and um, he drew it as a chess piece. And the second I saw it, I was like, when can we start? Like I, <clears throat> I didn't make a single modification. It was just, it was perfect. Nice. And my chest and like, that's such obviously huge real estate, especially for a woman. Mm-hmm. Cause I was making a commitment and I work in the business world. I, I was in a nine to five, you know, corporate environment. So I had to keep it covered. And, um, I've always had to keep all my tattoos covered and literally until this year, um, (laughs) which is crazy. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there he is. And, and so anyway, he just, he painted it on me, you know, and it was amazing. We did like layer after layer after layer and just kept going back. And that's awesome. Yeah. I love, it's still probably one of my all time favorite tattoos. I just love it so much. My one regret, if I could change anything and I could ultimately go to Conan and do this, the very top of the tattoo is the lion's fur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I wear just a little bit of a V-neck, it basically just looks like I have a hairy chest. That's funny. (laughs) And so like (laughs) in hindsight, I would have put like a crown of flowers at the top so that if I wear a slight V-neck, you could at least just see flowers. (laughs) But so usually I either all of him shows or none of him, either I wear like, you know, something very low cut or I just have it covered and it's just for me. So most of my time, I mean, mean, you've got some space there at like your collarbones and shoulders. You can just like pull something graceful from each shoulder down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I will (laughs) pull some like scroll work down and forward and then put a glow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wouldn't have to go up onto your neck, but it would like open up. Yeah. I definitely have plans to do more nice yeah lots more <laughs> okay but yeah so anyway so Kona was my first and I got tattooed by Michelle Wertman um twice at nice. um at this tattoo show actually in Massachusetts um oh, nice. ha- have you been to hyperspace no okay mm-hmm. just been tattooed just by her at conventions yeah she did um back of my neck in 2001 and then she did my foot in 2002 and um that was a great experience then, is that sarcasm you didn't uh, enjoy the foot tattoo so much <laughs> <laughs> you know what it was just, I, was like, I was on such a high journey <laughs> and especially getting tattooed at a convention like with everyone walking by the energy like it, I, I was actually fine getting it but that one was very very painful to heal no sh- I mean I couldn't wear any shoes at all or socks or anything I just had to like and I was at a hotel you know Mm -hmm. at a convention I had to somehow get home get to an airport get fly home without any shoe on it was yeah that was painful but it was great I love that tattoo did it swell real bad on you it did one of my feet never swelled like hardly at all the other foot swelled like crazy yeah this one definitely it it puffed up big time it was my left one that swelled as well I wonder if there's a correlation I don't know maybe if it like if there's something about the left side that swells more I don't know I don't know either, but yeah, so I had her do that. Then soon after that, I had Derb do my, um, it always bothered me that I had a back piece on two thirds of my back, you know, and mm-hmm. I had this big open space at the top that had a couple of little sticker tattoos, but I wanted them covered. And every time I went to an artist and said, Hey, can you do a double cover up fill this top of my back? They'd be like, mm, uh. it's so much space. And, and just the, the nature of the cover up. um, they, they just, I had a lot of hesitation, even Conan. I mean, I love him and he's a great artist, but he was like, yeah, I don't think I could do a good job. Um, and so then I showed it to Derb at Hell City, the first ever Hell City. I um, walked up to him and said, Hey, would you ever do a double cover up with this? I had over on the left side, I had a pretty big piece. And then I had fate down the, the middle of my spine and, and Derb was like, yeah, I could cover that up. No problem. And I'm like, I'm thinking Japanese traditional, like a koi fish. And he's like, yep, no problem. I've started calling that Durbanese. It is basically Durbanese. Durbanese. Yeah. <laughs> Durbanese. I started Japanese yeah. leg sleeve on my buddy and he's like, what are you working on? I was like, oh, we're doing a Durbanese koi. Yes. <laughs> that's so true. But yeah, I mean, I love it. And yeah, the rocks are dark over on the left side, but to me, it doesn't scream cover up. And I just think he did an amazing job and it was a great experience getting tattooed by him so no he does such a good job like that's dark but he's got all that, that motion around yeah. it and then the that sweep of water, water so it like gives motion and pulls your eye away mm-hmm. from the dark 
but like if it wasn't for that dark your eye might not catch like all the bright that's going on on the other side right and those purple swirls which i love yeah derb swirls derb swirls yeah yep. i love what he does with the purples in the sky like he he follows so many traditional rules but when you get to how he uses color that mm -hmm. he just breaks them all there it's like oh well that's gonna be a nice traditional piece nice outline yeah and then he comes in with the crazy alien color and it's like oh that's definitely not a traditional japanese piece anymore that yeah. is derbanese yep <laughs> for, for sure yeah, so after this, I took like a 10-year <laughs> break from tattoos. I knew I was eventually going to come back, but I um, I just was having a kid and, you know, and then I took it, but then I came back. I got a small piece over at um, Sacred Hand mm -hmm. from Bisu, and um, and then I got another small piece on my arm from Janine Ramos, who's new to, relatively new to Columbus mm -hmm. um, from California, um, and then I got a big upper stomach piece from Big Meese. What's that stomach? Nice. It's what's that? What's that? Girl power. Say? Nice. Girl power. Yeah. It's awesome. I think we got a picture of it. It's um. It's yeah. That's one of my favorites. I love it. I don't. I didn't have any black and gray anywhere. I was all bright colors. And so to have this big giant, you know, black and gray piece is cool. Nice. Yeah. What a good choice too. Anytime. I I very very seldom mess around with lettering anymore. But it, there was a time when I did, and Big Me's was always like one of the ones that I would look at because I like the way that he combines. Like he's got his his natural hand, like his natural calligraphy is mm. very beautiful and mm -hmm. elegant. Uh, like his traditional hand is beautiful oh, there. That's but i love what he does works, with the yeah. big block letters yeah like i love that he juxtaposes the two together well, so well the fact and he that turns the girl words into is art. um is white space negative space mm -hmm. because that's me like i'm the girl you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so oh, that looks awesome it's like did you put a picture of a finish yeah there? there is if you keep skip scrolling you'll find it um but yeah that was just the first sitting nice that might even just be halfway through the first sitting i don't know he goes hard I, I told him we were done like a couple of times in our final sitting. And he was and, like, okay, no, we're not. And yeah, he was like, <laughs> no. And and then when I saw what he had done, he had done these tiny pinstripes in every letter. And mm -hmm. when I saw th them, I was like, oh my God, you were right. We weren't done. Like I thought we were, but it looks amazing. Our um, coworker, Keith, um, Cam, just got a back piece started with big me's nice. and I won't show it to anybody. Ooh. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He oh. like it's gonna be a surprise. Like, man, come yeah. on! I went in on the secret. Right. <sighs> That's cool. So I can't wait to see what he's doing on him. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but I wish he'd show us. I, I wish know. He'd share with us what was going on. Nice. Man. Sandy says she might be missing the oh, finished photo uh -huh. of your stomach. Oh, if you have one, yeah, but yeah. If I definitely if it's do. too deep in there. It's no, I, but it looks super dope finished. I, it'd yeah. be awesome to show it. Yeah, it's. I love it. I'll show. I'll definitely find one. I should have my phone out for communication purposes too. And that was That's my right. last tattoo, but I do have an appointment uh, next in the next two weeks with my next artist to do a full sleeve. Ooh, what you getting? A tropical daydream. Is this what we'll be consulting yes. for? Oh. Okay. So Ooh. I didn't even realize that we had already, I already had her on my schedule for a consultation when yeah. I reached out. It's funny how <laughs> it's like, oh, that works. Oh, I hadn't connected the dots. <laughs> yeah, so it'll work out great. Yeah. How's this will work out super good. Oh, you know what? She's right. I didn't send a final one. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at us can, being can interactive get, on the Instagram. Both of us in there? Uh, maybe. I'm We're sure, gonna get a better. I'm sure they this. love just looking right at my face. Bam! Just like sound two like. in one picture. There we go. If I like scoot it up to the table, we could be in the same. I mean, I don't mind. Same angle. I guess. <laughs> it's like just resting on the two of you the whole time. <laughs> Jordan, you got any appointments coming up? I've got a lot of appointments. I've got a lot of cool projects that are. I meant right for your tatties. Oh, nope. I need to actually get a hold of the guy and schedule my next sessions. How's I your just, armpit uh, healing up? I'm just in money mode right now. So I've just been trying to save, but I got to get that day in the book. How's that armpit healing up? Oh, it's all healed. I walked up the stairs. Uh, our buddy Adam made a surprise visit to Red Tree for a week. And Jordan snuck in for like a half session. I walked up the back stairs and he was he was holding it together pretty well. But he was 
really, really hating life. Yeah. Oh, that they weren't armpit. in the that armpit, armpit but like they were like up close beside, beside the armpit. I've heard that, that, that yeah, I, around the there it is. Oh yeah, no, finally. Nice, thanks, Sandy. You're on it, girl. Oh, yeah. No, we're on that one. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yep. Those so the see the uh, the tiny little pinstripes in the middle of each letter that was that final step that i was like no i'm done and he was like nope you're not nope we got one more little yeah and it totally makes it mm -hmm. i love it so much yeah his, really cool. his lettering's beautiful yeah so i i saved my arms like i i tried to pace myself with my whole canvas and i, I saved my arms for and my legs for last um and so now i get to have some fun and because my whole front is done my whole back is done um other than just around the top of the shoulders, probably going down into the sleeves. Nice. nice. What a, what a privilege to add the, to this collection. I'm excited. What a privilege it's going to be. You've got a lot of a lot of amazing artists that have worked on you already. Thanks. So. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And I'm excited to be back into it because now I'm just, you know, so much was holding me back before, you know, my career mm -hmm. and like feeling like I had to keep it all under wraps and you know, now I just feel like because I'm doing my own thing and I'm just getting to an age where who's going to mess with me? Like I'm 50 now. Like, mm -hmm. like no one's going to. When you finally realize you don't really answer to anybody. Yes. It's so freeing. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Yep. So now I'm just going to leave it up. And even family elements who were somewhat against tattoos are just kind of not as influential anymore. And, you know, and maybe softening in their views too. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the things by by collecting nice work from like really good artists who approach tattooing like fine art, mm -hmm. we have the opportunity and the privilege to be the people to change other people's minds. Yes. We have the opportunity and privilege to be the one to like show off a tattoo to somebody who's never even considered tattoos and always disliked them and mm -hmm. have them like look at it and be like, oh, wow that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yep. it's kind of magic when you see it happen. It's magic when you, and, and I can't really like put into words what it is that changes in a person, but when they go from like unaccepting to, oh, wow, mm -hmm. that is cool. Like when you just see like distaste to happy Thursday. Oh, thanks Siri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I totally know what you mean though. My mom used to be fairly judgmental about tattoos until she found out that I was heavily tattooed and I was pretty heavily tattooed before I told my parents. Mm -hmm. I just kept it under wraps and you know, we didn't have social media back then. So, you know, there was nothing for them to see. And um, when I finally showed my mom, she um, was pretty shocked, but she also was like, wow, they're beautiful. Like objectively, they're just, their art. And I was like, mm, that's the point. <laughs> And she then became the person who, when a heavily tattooed individual would show up at their church, you know, and didn't know anybody, she'd be the one to like rush right over and like shake the person's hand and like say, hey, nice tattoos. Welcome to the church. And, you know, mm -hmm. thinking of my little mom, you know, cute little older lady with silver hair doing that is just, it tickles me. I love it. <laughs> when it, when it gets to a point where it's not even like, uh, where they don't even have to like look past them, but they're yeah. look, looking forward to seeing what they are. Like, oh, you have tattoos well, yeah, too. It Let goes me from see. like tolerance to appreciation to like celebration. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's a really cool transition to to, to see other people go through. Definitely, um, I've definitely experienced that with my own family. Um, my my mom and my stepdad were not tattooed. I grew up in a household where like nobody had tattoos. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, same, 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 definitely. But now my mom's like, she brags about who I've been worked on by. Like nice. now that like, you know, she knows the names and she traveled down to Ink and Dagger with me on one of my, not my very last appointment, but one of my last appointments. So she got to like, you know, it's, it's hard. It's almost hard for family to see how special things can be sometimes mm -hmm. when they're like right in it. And like, all they see is me stressing about emails and stressing about this, that, or the other. Is this Amazon? What's going on? Yeah, just hanging out out there. I guess I'll Chilling. Be back. Jordan's got a package. <laughs> <laughs> did somebody, Maybe it's something expensive. Yeah. Did somebody send donuts? 
Hey, that'd be awesome. <laughs> um, but but it, it's definitely a thing in my family. Uh, now, now that now that my mom's traveled with me and she's seen like, hmm, how there how there how there is like a a whole community mm-hmm. in tattooing, and it's like a whole, you know integrated family Mm -hmm. and there are so many people that are a part of it and we all have so much respect for each other and like among tattooers we all learn from each other but as collectors we're learning from one another for sure um and i love that it transcends like age gender nationality orientation race like mm -hmm. it's like you know it's like a great unifier yep i it took like not tattooing for 11 years but taking my mom down to like another state and another you know one of the best studios around Mm -hmm. for her to be like, Oh, wow. This, this really is a special thing. And this is, you know, like, it's not just a a thing that she does to make money. Like it finally made sense to her that like, I'm passionate about tattooing, just like I'm passionate about making art. Mm -hmm. It's not like I settled to be a tattooer because that's how she always described it up until recently is that like, Oh, she's a fine artist, but she just tattoos because she makes good money at it. And it's Mm -hmm. like, no, like I really love what I'm doing and I'm trying to do things that nobody else is doing with it. Like right. I'm trying to learn from the best and do even more. Like, yeah, yeah the that's tattoo pretty, is the fine art. That's like, pretty all, special. Yeah. Um, but finally, after like traveling down and like hearing Russ talk about Derb and the high, high esteem that they hold Derb mm-hmm. and Red Tree in, um, she finally got it. She finally got that. Like, this is the special thing. This is the, this is what artists wish they could do. And it's like, it took me getting all the way there and having (laughs) her like, just happen to go with me. Like, would you like to go to Georgia? It's going to be good weather. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, that's, that's finally what made her like actually see it as like something special and not something that I was just like, Oh, she's, she's, she just settled to be a tattooer. She's actually an artist. She's just Mm -hmm. doing this because it pays the bills. Like I could never get her to understand how that like cut me at the knees. Like, you know, like this is a thing. Yeah. But, but well, and it changes. It yeah, it, it changes does. is what I'm getting at. Is it, it took a long time, but the change happened, and now she sees like I'm not settling to make fine art on the skin. I'm mm-hmm. celebrating making fine art on the skin. Yeah. So she's gone from like like oh, this is the thing she does, da da da, to like celebrating it right along with mm-hmm. me. So it's it's a cool change that finally happened, but it took Congratulations. a really long time. Yeah, it took a long time. Uh, <laughs> but. But as a collector, she finally also understands, like, why it's so special to have the people work on me who I've been privileged enough to have work on me. Mm -hmm. Like, these are not only tattooers that I look up to, but these are, like, color smiths that I look up to. You Mm -hmm. know, like, if you've listened to any past episode and we start talking about color theory, I start nerding out. (laughs) So when my brain is just drawn to color and how it works, like who else am I going to look up to more than Russ Abbott, you know? And then we were talking earlier about how I I'm drawn to like ornamental shapes and antique jewelry. So let's look at that. Who else am I going to look up to besides Russ Abbott? So there's just two huge Mm -hmm. influential things that Russ and I have in common. And I, I just always wanted to collect something from him or just be around him to learn from him. So like, you know, I'm just, I'm just using that as, you know, all all of my tattoos have been learning experiences for me, but like, that's just an example of like, why, Mm -hmm. why, why we choose the artists that we choose, you know, those, those, um, those magic things that just kind of line up within our personalities that like draw us to an artist, you know, but yeah. So what was going on out front, Jordan? Freaking Amazon lady just <laughs> knocking up a storm. Like the just police? Wait. Yeah. I was like, that was, that was like. Or are you like, lady? She's probably sitting there. We're recorded in here. Like, oh, like, what are these fucking people doing? 
people. I'm right here. I can hear them talking. The fucking, They're yeah, just right. ignoring me. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, exactly. is oh, there's man. a painting in front of Jordan's door, so you can't even it's like use his front door. Hundred per- oh, we, can't, we don't get an angle of it, but a hundred percent blocked. Yeah, hundred percent blocked. I gotta door. walk all the way around my house. He'd have to move door. the couch and a painting. <laughs> and like the painting is a nine foot piece of plywood. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eighty five pound painting. <laughs> <laughs> takes two people <laughs> uh, yeah and it went out there barefoot was it cold. technology we've been waiting on so I'm still settling back down from that it was that little plasma ball <gasps> excellent we've been waiting on this oh for a gosh. whole two days right that's a long time in these amazon days when we need a plasma ball sound, for the mother activated plasma ball that'll be sitting right, right here, here. Going to see it in the image. Absolutely. Right now. Nice. Yes. It'd be perfect. We'd see it from every angle. That will be very That's cool. what we need. Mm-hmm. More toys, more lights. Always, always, <laughs> always. Every room, color control, mm-hmm. voice nice. control. Mm-hmm. We're getting there. We're starting to be grown ups with this thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the cameras are a lot more to mind. So, like, it's a lot for us three, I feel like, or us two, to like think about all that. Keep We're that getting there. We'll We're get more there. fluid with it. Big improvements. Wait, Jordan, you asked about the doula thing in the beginning, and I kind of went off on a tangent, as we do. But um, yeah, it's so we I like lo- to call those rabbit holes. Yes, yeah, so we went down a, yeah. a couple of rabbit holes. They were good ones. But the the doula idea of just this Back person who's kind of you know a friend and a supporter and a coach and um, gets you through whatever you're going through. And I, but I was like, oh, is there such a thing as a tattoo doula because you kind of need that sometimes, you know. Um, just a friend that's heavily tattooed that can, you know, help you find the right artist, help you. And sometimes artists do all the things that I, a tattoo doula can do, but sometimes the artist doesn't have time or, mm-hmm. or the client is just really needy. And the, and the artist is just like, nope. Like my dream ultimately is for artists to refer those, you know, whatever problem clients or just needy or clients to me so I can help, you know, help them and help you at the same time, like right. help the artist and help the client. Um, Cause sometimes people just right. don't be, have that person in their life. Be something of like a consultant a little bit to, the, yeah. to it, but exactly. also just like the doula, you know, exactly. someone just to help just you through. Literally and figuratively you hold your hand. Like if you, you know, if you need a hand to squeeze while you're getting tattooed that. And if, if you just need someone to bounce ideas off of in addition to your artist, then that, um, so far I've only done it for friends. It's really just kind of a fun thing. I threw up on the side, um, as a way to share all my tattoo content, like photos of my tattoos. And yeah, I think just, it's developing really cool. Thanks. Like it's, it's really awesome. And it but, looks really like tattoo professional too. Oh, like it's, thank you. you know, the goal is educating, right? Just right. educating people. That's, like, what it lo- and that's what it looks like. It comes off like that. A lot of tattooers forget that not everybody knows the etiquette. You know what yes. I mean? So it's yes. sometimes people are like, I, I mean, I've gotten the email where it's like, hey, I don't have any tattoos and I don't know where to start, but like, I kind of want this, this, and this, but I don't know how to draw or tell you that. It's like, oh, you just told me everything I need to know good job Mm -hmm. but sometimes you know they don't realize it's just that easy to be like hey i've never done this before i don't know what to do but like i am serious you know sometimes people will hit me up totally wrong they'll be like what's up i want tatted and uh like you've already come off at me wrong Mm -hmm. like oh you just kind of disrespected something that takes like you know, a lot of my passion, exactly. <laughs> you know, you, uh, okay, let's hear your tat idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like I, I'd totally rather somebody just be like, Hey, I, I don't know what's up. Uh, what do I do now? Yeah. And then I'll say, well, here are some new materials. It'll be this long for our consultation and uh, we'll talk about everything then, mm-hmm. you know, but some people don't know it's that, that easy. Um, but artists are funny. Like sometimes we're really hard to communicate with, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like sometimes we're overwhelmed. Other times we're just like not communicators. You know what I mean? We draw pictures and we daydream. So like it takes a little bit of patience and finesse, but like, yeah. And some artists, I mean, just like any profession, some people are just not people, people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can be an amazing artist and just not be a people person Mm -hmm. either because you're shy or, you know, introverted or whatever. You just, you know, Mm, that's actually something for a lot of people to consider is the introvert aspect Mm -hmm. because a lot of artists, you know, 
we're weirdos. Like we're all weirdos for whatever reason. Um, but a lot of artists really, you know, they like, they could be an amazing artist, but have social anxiety. Exactly. So they get nervous before every single tattoo because they're meeting somebody new, mm-hmm. you know, where like, for me, when I have a consultation day coming up, it's like, okay, I'm going to meet like six or eight new people today. Like I'm excited. Cause I don't know what's happening, but like on the day of our appointments, usually I'm well prepared and I know exactly who I'm dealing with mm-hmm. and what we're doing. And, um, but, but for some artists, there's that anxiety before every person. Yeah, of course. You know, just something to, to keep in mind, like, hmm. well, artists are weird. Be patient with us. Yeah. You know, Pe- people are weird period. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Be absolutely. patient, be patient with one another. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a doula, like, so let's say, let's say somebody hit you up and they're like, Hey, they're, they're saying exactly what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Hey, I've never been tattooed before. I want to get a back piece. Right. So my goal is to get them to think about it holistically and, um, sy- just strategically. So think about not just the tattoo, but like their entire life, like what's their career, what's their, you know, path as far as do they want to, you know, get married, have kids, you know, all that, like think about your whole life as much as you can and, and just be planful and mindful and, and strategic about it. And, you know, if you, if you know, you want to be in, you know, a TV anchor, (laughs) then you're not going to get a face tattoo (laughs) probably. Right. So just, I mean, as simple as that, but also, you know, just helping people think through, don't go necessarily go small just because you think you just want a small tattoo. Think about your body, think about your anatomy, just trying to get people to like broaden back from just, I want a tattoo because I think it's cool to like thinking of it as an art form, Mm -hmm. thinking of it as, you know, something that will be with you forever, longer than most relationships in your life, longer than any job, um, you know, and just getting them to kind of put all that thought into it. And um, sometimes people are willing to, and sometimes people are like, oh, no, I just want a cool tattoo right now. And that's so, fine too. There, I mean, the, being both ways of collecting are fine. Right. I mean, there's not, yeah. I'm not judging. What I, are, I judge, but, a t- I judge a tiny but one being, of the being things there to help people see the full circle and seeing, seeing everything so that around, if they want to, in all different directions. So that if they want to go people, that route, they can't. People only know a certain way. So exactly. it's, it's nice to be there for people. Like that's why we're doing, we're doing this because so many people jump into tattoos thinking about exactly. uh, thinking like the, what their idea of a tattoo is you know and that's cool like you have your idea of it and then you come in and realize like we'll show you some other things and are able to open your mind uh oh yeah we're just here to open your mind more about exactly. more tattoos exactly there's that's... more out there than what, what you probably know yes more more styles more types more yeah one of the things I've started doing with um, some of my clients, it, like, because I've got I've got a lot of clients that like I've done multiple sleeves. I'm you know things are starting to to connect. So now, much earlier in the process, I'm starting to like have the conversation. How covered do you want to be? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And I feel like even if you're not going for a bodysuit, even if you're not going, and I always say it's not a race. So even if you are going for full coverage, that for some people, that's a lifetime journey. Sure. That's not a five-year journey. Mm-hmm. Um, but much earlier on, I feel like I'm starting to ask people, like, do you imagine two sleeves? Do you imagine, mm-hmm. like, are you going to get your legs tattooed? Like, mm-hmm. are you going to, is this going to go onto your torso? And it's always like, even if you don't imagine me being the one to do it, like, let's consider it so that everything can be cohesive and flow mm-hmm. together. Um, and that's just because like the way I planned my collection, it's really coming together as I go, but I kind of have this overall vision of everything just kind of tying into one another and being a cohesive suit, Mm -hmm. being a cohesive thing. Not that I'm chasing, like, I don't need to do it by any certain time, but I just want it to look like these artists worked together. I want it to look like as if you couldn't tell who worked on me when mm-hmm. or where, like it, I want it to all just be one cohesive, um, arrangement. Yeah. That's how I want my tattoos to be too, moving forward. And, you know, I have friends who are the opposite. You know, I had a friend who's in the military and her big thing is anytime she goes to a new city or a new place, she gets a tattoo there from anyone. She doesn't care what. And like, so it's just, and then after she has all those miscellaneous you know travel souvenirs then she has someone kind of weave a background Mm -hmm. around 
that's a great way to, I mean, however you do it is there's no, I have an area of my body that I'm saving just for that. So my, my left leg from the knee down is I call it my sporadic leg. Yeah. So I have no plans on rushing to fill that area. I actually want to keep it open because I I do have plans for my arms. Mm -hmm. Um, and one day I'll probably do my neck, but I'm not, you know, I'm not, I like my neck the way it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like, I don't know. That's about the only part of me that's not uh, spoken for. Um, but anyway, so I'll always have the space from my knee down just to collect smaller pieces. And, you know, I, I want to collect from friends and I want to, I want to have those souvenir tattoos. Mm -hmm. And I, I do like just like being in a city with a friend and being like, Hey, we're at the convention together. I bet so-and-so has got time that they could squeeze us in, you know, like I, I like the idea of not being finished. Mm -hmm. It would be a sad day if I knew I was never going to be tattooed again, as much as I hate being tattooed. Like, do you really? Oh, I hate it. It hurts. I I feel punished afterwards. I mean, I love it. I love it. It is cleansing, but but the pain part of it and anxiety leading up. I think it's worth it in the end. Yeah. You know, of course, you know, obviously. Makes my like, hands sweat. I think I'm better off because of the pain in the end. Yeah. And I really wouldn't want to go through the tattoo process without it. Yeah. But on the other end, I also wish it didn't hurt. I, love, <laughs> I usually love the first hour. Remember when I was talking about time traveling earlier? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, good. That's a good use for it. Let um, me fast forward. Oh, Just yeah. eight hours. That's all I need. <laughs> Yeah, I usually love the first hour, but then after that, I'm kind of with you, like, mm-hmm. especially, and we talked about it at breakfast, especially as I get older, since 40, oh, you just wait. It's so much worse. It's so, my stomach almost killed me. I mean, it really did. I, it almost broke me. <laughs> I'm 35 and my, my belly's the only part of my me. torso. Not my done. first day in my back, it broke me. Yeah. Broke you down. Hey, speaking of doulas, let me ask you this, Jordan. <laughs> so... I had the privilege of traveling over to hyperspace with Jordan when he got his back started. And I, I wanted to, I tried to walk the line of not like, I didn't want to like mother hen him too much and tell him what to do and like try to over prepare. Cause like I didn't have that and I had to go through it on my own and you learn a lot and you grow a lot from it. But like, do you think it was helpful having me there to like prepare you or did it, was it kind of on your nerves? Oh no, I think it was helpful having someone there for yeah. sure. Yeah. For me, it's any, like anything that can take my mind off the pain. So having like another's presence mm-hmm. there does help me a lot. I think as an artist, I, I don't know, it's nice when it's just like you and a client and like, there's not always someone there like talking and stuff, but at the same time, it, it is nice to have the banter of someone else there, even as the artist and like having another person's client there, mm-hmm. but as the person getting tattooed, I really enjoy having someone else there. Yeah, I do. I do too. Like, like, I think like I was honestly bummed when you like went off to go like, <laughs> on walks and stuff. You're like, I don't want to bother you. I'm like, no, you're not bothering me. Come <laughs> Stay. back. Come back. Stay. Good. So you, what you're saying is there's, there is a, a, a place for a tattoo doula yes. <laughs> for people who don't have that, you know, tattoo best friend to come along. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, indeed. I was like, make sure you eat breakfast, get some more carbs hydrate do the things mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah especially i mean it's, it's the best going i like going with experienced people too yes already been through the ropes they understand what it's like yeah exactly. they know how to treat you yeah <laughs> like this is gonna suck but you're gonna be okay right. especially like when you're going through the pain like and stuff knowing like oh yeah, yeah you've been through it. you understand what i'm going through right now yeah <laughs> and it's all- like because you just don't if you're watching someone get tattooed you just don't feel any pain no. obviously Mm-mm. and you just do not get a sense of what that feels like unless yeah. you've been through it right like, even exactly when I, even when i tattoo people like i'll cut if it's been a while since i've been tattooed mm-hmm. i'll catch myself being like almost unempathetic about it and not really being able to relate to the pain until i'm feeling it again and i'm just like yep fuck this and then i'm super empathetic the next few yeah months. <laughs> yeah until it wears off again tattoo karma Mm-hmm. <laughs> every tattoo artist needs to get tattooed if you're not tattooed, oh you're so right conan yeah, didn't you're just have, waiting to get the right tattoo yeah conan didn't have any for years and i would always write him everyone wrote him about it finally now he's you know got some it'll help you with your clients it'll yeah. help you with client comfort because yep. it'll just i'll never forget though moving from conan's tattoo style to especially like a derb who's like you know very hammer-handed like you know it's he, I mean, you feel it <laughs> when tattoos you. Conan, his, his style is just so painterly that, especially on my ones on my front, 
I mean, it, it almost tickled more than anything mm-hmm. else, you know, now the course it obviously packed in that color, it's solid color. So that I definitely felt more like, oh. but then, you know, it still was nothing compared to like just Derb style. I hear it's, Derb's pretty gentle. I mean, it's, he's not rough, <laughs> but it's just, it didn't feel like a paintbrush. <laughs> I hope it feels like a paintbrush when I work on you. Oh, well, it probably won't. It'll be great either way. Here? No, um, a full sleeve. Actually, this one. I keep saying my left, but it's my right. That's so cool. Yeah, and I have nothing on that arm. I, I was going to do the left, but I have this little goofy Wonder Woman tattoo, and then I have another one right here. So I decided, no, you need the That's awesome. empty canvas. Nice. I'm excited. It's a big so privilege. I've I'm got a great collection. It I'm makes really, me really excited to add to it. It's just, it all came together. I'm very stoked. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that you've been, from your other Instagram handle, you've been following me for a long time. I have because I, yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew I was going to plant a sleeve at some point. I knew I wanted to be a woman. We talked a little bit about that this morning. I, you know, no offense to male tattoos. I love all the tattoos that I have, but most of them have been done by men except with a very few exceptions. And that's just because the industry is so male dominated Mm -hmm. and there's so many talented male artists period. Um, but there are also very many talented female artists and I've never sought them out, even though in my life, I tend to be all about girl power and feminism and, you know, Mm -hmm. support women. And so it was crazy to me to realize like, Oh my God, like I literally got a girl power tattoo from a man, Mm -hmm. you know, like what what was I thinking? Like, and so again, just back to that whole, like, be strategic, think about your worldview, think about your, you know, who you want to be tattooed by and all that. So, yeah. So anyway, started looking at women, started narrowing it down and then saw your work. And I was like, mm. and actually it doesn't have to be women, women and non-binary. Just, I just want to support like, you know, girl power. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's all. And, and I'm not saying I'll never be tattooed by men again. Cause if Conan ever had time on his schedule and called me, I'd go in a heartbeat. But no, you, you had your experience there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Time to blow out to some feminine energy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Nothing wrong with that. There's definitely always going to, you can't doubt, you can't doubt. I mean, of course men can be feminine, but you can't doubt there's going to be more uh, feminine energy that's going to come yes. from, you know, a yes. tattoo that's coming from exactly. someone who definitely does have like a feminine, like mystical side mm-hmm. of work and you see it as what you want. And it's like, yeah, oh, it couldn't be more perfect for, yeah. the, for the job. I often forget how it's dominated totally cool the industry is by men. For your tattoo. I, uh, like my, my first tattoo was by a woman. So like for me, I, I just forget sometimes mm-hmm. that like it's kind of special and like especially in like the early 2000s to be a woman and to mm-hmm. be like good um it took me a long time my my first tattoo took me a really long time to find the artist to do it I knew what I wanted um and it was um an Andy Warhol daisy I got it really little on my hip um if I had it to do over I would make it way bigger but probably the same tattoo, but bigger, or mm-hmm. maybe the same tattoo in multiple colors. Cause it's Warhol. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it took forever. Just like searching all over Michigan, trying to find an artist, like a tattoo artist that was an artist. I wanted mm-hmm. somebody that wasn't, you know, black outline colored in. Exactly. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but like being an artist myself and like, I, I would hate to wear something where if I look down at it, I would have the feeling like I could have done better than that myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was, that was almost like an apprehension with my first tattoo. So I found Carissa Gray who like she did, does, did, does like this real bright, like good graffiti style Mm -hmm. tattooing where like the sons were like, like had crookedy arms and crazy faces, but like the outlines were bold and crisp, like where it would be like a thick to thin line and like Mm -hmm. solidly colored wall to wall. Like, and then she also did a lot of like wall to wall saturated fractals that were just super bright colored, like if I, if I were to compare her to somebody, I didn't know who Derb was at the time, but mm-hmm. if I were to compare her to somebody at that time, it would be like the kind of stuff that Derb was doing, like the crazy outer yeah. space stuff, but just throw fractals in there too. Nice. Um, so I found her and that was a 75 mile drive from Ionia to Sagatuck and she's in Douglas now, just outside of Sagatuck. But um, it was hard in those days, it was hard to find a really good, like, artist Mm -hmm. that tattooed um let alone find one that was a woman too yeah it just so happened that she was a woman yeah 
So I wasn't specifically looking for a woman. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that I found a woman. So, um, and then recently I've actually been working on her apprentice. Um, She's actually a prolific established tattooer herself. Her name's Sam Dustin. She did a guest spot with us at Red Tree a few months ago. Um, And she and I were talking about Carissa and she was like filling me in on some of Carissa's early career. And it's like, man, she lived through the nightmare that I'm thankful that I avoided. Mm -hmm. Like I got into it and because I was self-taught and I did so much on my own, um, I really didn't have a lot of those opportunities for men to say, sit down, little girl. Right. So like when I get asked questions about like how hard it was coming up to be a female, you know. I I only had a few little tastes of that. So Mm -hmm. for me, it's really a non-issue. I've been surrounded by really good artists, Mm -hmm. male or female. So I'm really privileged in that way. But like, I also know that I'm privileged in that way. Mm -hmm. Not all women have it as easy as I did. Not all women, like, (sighs) made it through their tattoo career without crazy sexual harassment stories. Right. Or, you know, being made to feel you're less than because Mm -hmm. of this, that, or the other. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like that's why I'm so like, I've got to be a cheerleader for other females now, like, because I did have it easy. I need to push them. And a lot of times, like there's a lot, there are a lot of female, uh, female tattooers in Columbus who like, you might not even know I'm in your corner. You might not even know that I'm like sending work your way that I've been following that I know you're going to knock out of the Mm -hmm. park. But like, (sighs) I don't know. It is just a little bit of the girl power in me. Like I do want to like push the yeah, girls ahead a little bit course. more, but, um, but you know, it takes, it takes the work. And I, that, I think that's the thing that's helped me avoid a lot of those pitfalls, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm not the kind of girl to spend a lot of time or energy on my makeup or hair clearly, like from the dreadlocks and usually like pillow face that I walk in with. <laughs> um, but there, there are definitely a lot of pitfalls and, and, you know, to hear years later that like Carissa lived through all of those and like mm-hmm. passed on a little bit of magic to me that somehow I think like I skated by and didn't, didn't deal with a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, I, I, I'm usually not one, the, the kind of feminist to be out front and complain. I'm the kind of feminist that just like puts my nose to the grindstone and says, you know, I'll show you, mm-hmm. like say I can't and I'll show you. Right. And nine times out of 10, it's not even a male or female thing for me. It's like, Oh, you don't think I can do it. Well, that's foolish. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then being, being a collector, um, once, once I started collecting big work, I I even forget that I'm kind of like out of my element walking around and like hanging out with all these men with body suits. Like sometimes I'll be in a group of like five or six men. We'll all be showing off our leg sleeves and like, I go to take my shirt off and it's like, well, I'm just one of the guys here. Um, But sometimes I forget that I'm the only woman in the group. We Mm -hmm. get like so excited that we're showing stuff off. And it's just like, for me, a lot of times a non-factor that I'm the only woman, but that's not the story for a lot of other collectors. Do you Mm -hmm. think it's been like with, because you've been in a lot of tattoo competitions and stuff. Do you Mm -hmm. think the tattoo competitions are different for women than men? Um, I mean, maybe I I can tell you that at every tattoo convention I've ever been, like, it's just very, um, objectifying. Like there's the whole place is like the male gaze, right? Like it's just, um, the whole tattoo industry is so male dominated that like, usually most shops will have like a very attractive, very slim, incredible bodied, incredibly tattooed young girl at the front as like the shop, you know, Mm -hmm. person at the front desk. And it's just so stereotypical. It's like at every, practically every shop. And, and so, and then you go to conventions and, you know, the competitions, not so much. I mean, the competitions are best chest is best chest, whether it's male or female. I don't, you know, sometimes they separate it out. Sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't, in the competitions, I don't find this as much of an issue, but it's more like the entertainment, like it's, you know, um, female dancers or whatever, or the suicide squad or, you know, whatever models everywhere. Like it's so our buddy, Ben, you've been to hell city, obviously. Right. So our buddy, Ben, he's one of, uh, Derb's like camera guys and he helps with the AV Mm -hmm. stuff. He helps with everything around red tree too. His birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Ben. (laughs) 
Um, but he has an idea to do what he calls a brolesque. Nice. I like so it. when Hell City comes back, there's probably going to be a brolesque. That's very per- cool performance. And I'm, by the way, I'm not necessarily complaining. I'm more observing. I think like it's not that I mind those things. It's just that I notice it and kind of go, hmm, okay. Like as a woman, how do I feel about this? You know, but um, I'm not complaining. I love tattoo conventions and I love you know the tattoo industry and it's just yeah. I want to see the girl, see the female artist rise on their merit but maybe just be supported by collectors like me who Mm -hmm. for whom this is important some people just it won't matter you know gender isn't going to be an issue in their tattoo but for me i just want to you know support more women oh yeah that's it that's it have you ever been tattooed by a woman no i'll be your first Ooh. All the privileges all the privileges all the privileges (laughs) (laughs) yeah i can't wait Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is kind of a cool thing. I've been tattooed by Layla D'Amato. She's from Detroit, maybe just outside of Detroit. Future Laser Tiger. Does that sound right? Future Laser Tiger. Mm, that sounds familiar. But and don't sure. you have some Michelle Workman too? No. Nope, yeah. guy. Oh, okay. That guy did my armpits. Got it. Okay some reason i thought you did i getting tattooed by her was amazing because um she just had such a like the whole like bloom project was just taking off Mm -hmm. and um she was you know all about flowers and i didn't want a flower i wanted a mermaid but she was like super into it and i just felt like it was just a really cool experience she vibed off a lot of the same things i vibed off Mm -hmm. and you know it just was very felt very fun and collaborative um just in a different way than I had collaborated with Conan before. So Mm -hmm. this isn't tattoo related, but one of the things I love about Michelle and like Michelle and Guy together in particular is the way they like enunciate in their word choice when they speak to each other. And when they speak to Kaya, I think they both have a very like concise. (laughs) Hmm. I don't even want to say vocabulary choice, but just the way they communicate. I love it. Mm -hmm. They're like, they're so incredibly efficient with their word usage and <laughs> clear at the same time. They say the most with the fewest words. I've had one experience with the both of them and Kaya. That it can be a handful. Unfair. It can be a handful. <laughs> you, last time we were there, Kaya climbed the back of my Cadillac and guy like freaked out. He's like, Kaya, that is a very expensive car. Yeah, and I'm like, that. it's just a car. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh He's like, God. Kaya. I remember the last time we, I was there, Kaya and Michelle were kept changing the, the Spotify station while we were working to <laughs> nice. Christmas music. Oh, that's hilarious. And they eventually broke the Spotify. Oh no. Because they did it. And then he couldn't change back to his playlist. And he was so upset. By oh it. no. Was, like really upset, but so it was really funny because it just went from like like silly games to like oh shit now we can't listen to music <laughs> tattooing to christmas music is not the, that's not it yeah, that's funny it was silly <laughs> it was silly back when i worked retail like after the first week after thanksgiving i was oh. over christmas music it was enough i believe it i like it like the first week kind of jingly mm-hmm. nostalgic mm-hmm. and then it's like oh Uh, luckily victoria's secret their christmas music was their own mix and it was like this like mellow club trancey version of all the christmas songs so it was like a mellow edm christmas at victoria's secret back there so it wasn't bad i have a speaking of girl power yeah before i tattooed would you have known that i was a panty pusher black suit pink shirt i would not have known hair up definitely would pink eyeshadow called it yeah you must have an awesome lingerie drawer. Absolutely not. It's I'm I'm like cotton panties. I'm all about comfort, girl. <laughs> half the time I don't even wear a bra. What a even way, when I work there, what a the waste I didn't even wear to a bra. work there and waste the discount. <laughs> now lotions and fragrances. Oh, yeah. We can talk all day. Okay. All right. We've got some angels. Sorry, secret angels going. Uh, they have a fragrance called Body. It's their most natural fragrance. It's chocked full of like hyacinth and white Mm -hmm. lily um so it's very it's a very fresh clean spring kind of fragrance and it's also the fragrance that they use they've got like a laundry detergent for like your delicates Mm -hmm. and it's the same fragrance as that so it's just a clean floral it's a good one nice 
I, I can talk about fragrances see, all day if we go down that rabbit hole. I don't shop at Abercrombie for anything at all, but I buy out their cologne all day. Really? Mm-hmm. I've never smelled it. I'll have to check it out. I buy it out. I um I have not set foot in it a Victoria's Secret since like the 90s, I think. Hmm. It would have been what years would I have been working there? Like oh five, oh six. Okay. Oh oh five, oh six, oh four, oh five, oh six, maybe in there. Yep traveled set up a bunch of stores up in michigan um the one that's at easton now the the big the the flagship one one, i helped set that up that one look always looks like a million bucks it does it does yeah it's the that's like one of the the crown jewels of the Mm -hmm. stores nice yeah i don't know what's going on with that company now though i've been removed for so long yeah it's but um, when i worked there it was a great company they did a lot of really uh, philanthropic things Mm -hmm. a lot of really good charities that we had the option to contribute to or not um but i I felt really good working for that company when i worked for them so i would never know yeah right yeah all the things what's the job you've had that we would be surprised by jordan um i've had one job seriously outside of tattooing (laughs) oh my god and that was working at a ski resort I could see that. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot. I've done a lot of different little things and stuff, you know, landscaping and stuff. I had my like little businesses before I was mm-hmm. 18, like, you know, walking around my lake with like lawnmowers and stuff as a kid yeah. and shit like that. And, yeah. But uh, in terms of like, I was able to skip out and all like the 16 year old McDonald's stuff and all like that. I just had no money at all for a okay. long time. So like I was lucky enough to just get by on nothing. So I just propelled me to do art. And so. I feel like that time most people spent working, I spent just making a lot of art. Mm-hmm. Didn't make any money from my art. Didn't make any money doing anything. But I also jumped into tattooing, you know, right when I was 18. So I guess I was making like enough to survive, mm-hmm. you know, from that, not tattooing legally off the bat, like I should have. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't have any weird job stories. <laughs> We're gonna have to change that. Hell no. I'm gonna be signing Jordan up on some personal Hell ads. No. <laughs> Day laborer. Let's start telling what you're gonna get yourself into. Prison, <laughs> prison guard. <laughs> Jordan, I would never want to see you as a prison guard. I don't. That I was actually my next job. That was your next. Was gonna, your next choice mm-hmm. if tattooing. If tattooing fails, if yeah. my hands you're fail, gonna, you're yeah, gonna I'm be gonna, a prison guard. Nub as a police guard. <laughs> I mean. I'm not, I'm not going to discourage anybody from being a corrections guard. officer. It's a great living. Do it. Be proud of it. However, it's just the safety factor. You're, yeah. you're, you're going into it. You're voluntarily going into an unsafe environment every yes. day. And I know this, the odds of something happening are super duper slim, but like we've whew. seen the movies. Yep. Yep. Natural born killers. Person. Have you ever watched that? Oh my God. That's one of my the favorite town movies. I grew up in had seven prisons. <laughs> it's a little community seven i think there's five now oh man one of them called imax it's just big maximum security facility supposedly there's tunnels that go under the road to the other two prisons i don't know it's crazy yeah no i'm glad to have skipped the uh heavy labor in life allowed me to be the artist that i am <laughs> heavy labor hmm. hard labor heavy labor heavy labor all of it. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to do anything heavy or hard. <laughs> nope, I got my own projects. Yeah. I don't need to do things for other people. <clears throat> Work for other people. Except for Derby. I mean, it's a funny, it's a funny gray area. Like technically we work for Derb, but I think it's, I feel better saying we work with. But it's such we a. We work with and at Derbs. And also <laughs> yes, for him. we work with and around <laughs> and, and for and there. beside of. Right. And... He's a benevolent. But like, what's so awesome <laughs> He's a benevolent about ruler. For, what's great about working for <laughs> him is like, it's, you couldn't say anything like bad. It doesn't, you know, it's a great job. Yeah, we yeah, oh, yeah. We every, have everything's great. We have we all the freedom in the world, but also all the support in the world, which mm-hmm. is a super rare combination. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you have you have you been to Red Tree yet? The new not. location? I have not. I need to check it out. Were you at the old location? The I one was, on fourth. I got tattooed by him at Saint Skin. Okay, so you High Street. Okay, it's a long, long time ago. Okay. Have you come, you've not come to any of the art no. shows or any? So you've never even been to Red Tree? I know. Girl, how do you live in Columbus and not like? I know. I need to come down, check it out. Well, we got, we 
tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. There soon enough. That's right. No, it's special. It's a special place. It's like a it's a, a art gallery mm-hmm. and our home and our mess making place. Jordan and I have a bunch of music instruments out in the garage. Sometimes nice. it turns into pretty rad little impromptu jam sessions. Other times it's nonsense. And I think Jess just wants to wring our necks. But she's cool about it. She's not. I feel like we drive her crazy, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Like it's rare. Sorry, it's, Jess. Rare, it's rare enough that I think she's okay with it. I hope she just rolls her eyes and thinks we're silly. I hope. There's worse I think, things I you think could she's do. hundred percent just fine with it. We got to get on recording ourselves a theme song, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. We should have our own theme song to come in oh, and out. Totally. With. Absolutely. We've been working on it. We've got a few like gibberish recordings that we made with like little condenser mic in the studio. But I think we need to get on the ball. Like within the next two weeks, we should like deadline. And it can have the sound of drill going in the background. There should be like a Marty tattoo machine running or yeah. maybe Ben Rife. Have that yang, 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 yang. <laughs> Have that be like our metronome that we play music to. That's the not what? a bad idea. The what? The yang, yang, yang of a coil tattoo machine. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, the yang, 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 yang. Yeah. Yep, yep. Little <laughs> If you're whip stippling, it's brap, brap. Brap, brap. If you're shading, it's yeah, 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 because you want it to be nice and smooth. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my skin's starting to itch. I've spent a lot of years working on that. That's one of the things when you walk into a convention and you just hear like so many people being tattooed at once. My skin literally starts like I want. I need to get tattooed. It's almost quiet now, though. Everyone's on the rotary game. Yeah, you have a few. It's even, so funny how many people use rotaries solidly, though. There's even Marty's lot, been using a, a rotary. Coils. There are a lot of coils and connections. Don't yep. get me wrong. But rotary, everyone's switching over to it. It's just mm. so easy and it's so nice being wireless. And so many people are jumping over to the wireless game. I feel like it even... It, I have less soreness in my wrists and stuff. Granted, <laughs> I've got super prissy little wrists. Hashtag girl power. <laughs> but... Yeah. I got a lot of too. But, I, like holding but, holding coils definitely it's a lot different. It's really bad on your wrist, and my wrist is already getting bad enough with what I have going on. Even with your man yeah. wrists, my man wrists, your man wrists get sore with a coil machine too. Yeah, I thought it was only my dainty girl wrists. No, no, I gotta take care of my wrists. I've been making art my whole life with no heavy labor. Hmm. <laughs> no heavy labor, <laughs> son. Your body's atrophy <laughs> from you've, what? You've got these... lack of hard <laughs> heavy labor lack of toughness you've got these really buff hands and the rest of you is like spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> son we've detected the problem right right what's the cure doc robot legs robot legs <laughs> i just expect a half of it to shut down when i'm about 45 and then i'm gonna switch over to robot legs 45 is not that far away you got like what how many I, years I is that for I you? I just can't wait. Oh, I just, just can't wait. I oh, can't wait. Just wait. I don't want to be a robot. I'll make the switch before they're even gone. Robot leg. <laughs> Do you have any leg tattoos? Not yet. I have my foot, um, but that's it. Nothing else on my legs. I'm sorry, mm. guys. I got to be real bad. I think it's going to be funny if Jordan actually gets like some robot legs tattooed on him. Yeah. Like crazy pistons and cords and. I wouldn't get it. It kind of needs to I happen. Get, I might get some cool wax, but I, will, I won't get pistons. You're not getting robot legs? You know, robot legs have to have pneumatics or hydraulics to work. There's <laughs> got to be a piston. <laughs> There's got to be a piston. Powered by bioorganic tendril a bio tendril piston oh my gosh so it's gonna work like a mollusk his his robot legs are gonna work like mollusks yeah like like octopus that's turning into a snail that's not turning into a robot that's Isn't like, there some kind of a cuttlefish i remember hearing about it's a so cuttlefish. funny jordan his uh spirit animal is a cuttlefish that's what it is okay so that's that's the kind of power he's gonna use yep cuttlefish power I can't believe that. So do you do you plan on doing your legs? Are you yes. going for full coverage? Yeah. I don't know about full coverage. Um, certainly my full, both full arms, um, 
fill out my shoulders like across the top and you know my shoulder two shoulder caps um and then yeah i think i'll do my calves after that and then some kind of thigh hip combo thing so yeah pretty do you, do you already have um ideas for those spaces or it's just vague areas that you imagine being tattooed um so my calves i want to have done by um Laura Anunaki, who's in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. She's Japanese in Mexico City. Um, amazing combination there. And sh she does like these unbelievable, like sparkly glitter, high color, high gloss, like just, they look amazing. But usually of like, um, like anime characters mm -hmm. or very sweet little girl, like the whole like Lolita goth kind of okay. scene. Like, yeah, so that'll be the back of my calves for sure. Um, this arm, as you know, tropical daydream. Oh no. I mean this arm, I have to keep doing that. I keep switching, <laughs> uh, tropical daydream on the right left. will be, um, collecting here and there, but mostly organic stuff. Um, and then my legs, I don't know yet. I mean, I love skulls. I've loved skulls all my life, like skulls and skeletons. So mm -hmm. somewhere I want something with that. Um, I would love some sort of tribute to childhood that actually this arm was going to be a tribute to childhood with just like different things that I loved as a kid and still love as, you know, a quote unquote adult. Um, a tribute to childhood is yeah. so vague. You can have so many cool things. Like if that's the theme, there are yeah. so many, like they could be trinkets, they could be stories and scenes. Exactly. And it, and it can be my childhood, or but also my daughter's. Cause like right now on this arm, I have a Wonder Woman tattoo, which is, I loved Wonder Woman as a kid mm -hmm. and it's also girl power. Um, but then I also have a tattoo that is just a potion bottle that Janine Ramos did, but um, I made it uh, about my daughter. Like I made it, uh, it's like lightning in a bottle basically. And that's, that's my, my kid. So yeah. Nice. Um, so the whole arm will be just different things from my childhood and from hers, but Oh, and there it is. Yeah. My little potion bottle. Nice. There you go. And my daughter has a, um, Perfect. a constellation of, uh, moles on her back that look like a constellation of stars. And so I had her do that. That's the exact pattern of, um, moles that my daughter has, but she did it as little, like, stars how cool that's a really neat way to incorporate such a personal story in a little tattoo mm -hmm. so a lot of times when people come to me with ideas and it's like a hundred ideas in one and they're yeah. like i need to capture everything about this person in yeah. one tattoo it's like well hold on a yeah. second let's, let's distill let's, that down a little bit let's tell me more mm -hmm. tell me more and like i just kind of like i'll just ask prying questions about the person mm -hmm. so it'll be like okay so they really spend a lot of time cooking, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Did you spend a lot of time tasting food? Okay. So then I just like follow the story further yeah. down, further down. And then we can end up either like taking something exi that exists and mm -hmm. like putting those twinkles around it, like you said, or like just adding a little bit of flavor that makes it personal to them. Yeah. Sometimes you don't need to add a hundred thousand different things to tell the story. It can be just like this is it. This yeah. is the thing to tell yeah. the story. Well, yeah, that was, I mean, a piece of her flash that we just made into mm -hmm. a tattoo from about my daughter, you yep. know, like, but I like that better than sometimes I, I like to be more subtle about things than over, you know, like I could have just done a portrait of my daughter, but it's like, oh, no, I just wanted to do a little, a little more understated than that. You know, I think there's something magic in like having the choice of, of it being a conversation piece. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, you can talk about it or you can not like, yeah. I like that. Like either way you're wearing it on your sleeve, exactly. but like it, it allows interpretation. One way allows interpretation. The other way doesn't allow yeah. interpretation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I love the super meaningful tattoos, but I also love the ones like we've talked about. Just, I just wanted it. I just thought it was cool just for the hell of it. You know, I like both. Right. Both types. I like creating my own associations and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to my tattoos, a lot of them are fairly abstract, so I don't necessarily have like their direct meaning. But I like, you know, I like it's almost like whatever you think about, you can exactly. create. So it's, you know, I, I create my own associations towards it and the connections I make and the things that lead up to the tattoos and the tattoo itself, the process, the things I learned that I'm, while I'm going through that, the things I learned that led up to the tattoo, then getting the tattoo, just in grains. Mm -hmm. I don't know so much that might be going on in my life. And then I associate that with that and just like these checkpoints in life and Absolutely. Like parts of my story, even if they might not be able to represent it. 
like in a way where it's like, oh yeah, I know now I know everything about you because I see your tattoo. <laughs> right. It's like it starts to make you ask questions. And yeah. stuff. You know what I was thinking about the other night? I always love when you hear from people and they're like, yeah, I got this eagle tattoo on a whim. And like, since then, everybody thinks that's my favorite animal. And they <laughs> buy me eagle everything. I got all these eagle figurines. And I just like got the tattoo because I thought it looked cool. Or people that are like, yeah, I got this like tiger tattoo. And now like I got like tiger blankets and stuffed tigers. <laughs> Have you ever seen that happen where somebody just gets a tattoo on a whim and now like I'm, their whole life is I'm wrapped sure, around the that, tattoo? That makes perfect sense. I, I'm not sure in any specific examples, but oh man, that's really funny. It I is can really totally funny. see that happening. Yeah, I can too. Everybody thinks tigers are my favorite. I just <laughs> got the tiger because it looked cool. I was drinking. I don't know. <laughs> oh my I god! I wish people bought me presents based on my tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jordan. I thought I thought you might like this really weird alien organic looking rock thing that I found and I broke it open and it had liquid inside and it was like <laughs> looked like molten lava. I don't know. But you probably would like that. I would love it. I know. See, but where so would one find that? So they're right. Exactly. I, but I, I mean with, along the same concept, I wish people would I when I I actually like that thing, yeah. they don't get it for me. Uh, it's my yeah. alien rock. <laughs> <Where's> my <laughs> alien rock. <laughs> That's what you should start saying every time you meet somebody. It's like, <laughs> just give them that face. Like, <laughs> I think you guys are on to something though, because <laughs> buying someone gifts based on their tattoos is brilliant. Because how are they not going to like it? You're right. And it's really funny if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I feel like if you were to look at my tattoos, you you could probably hit some home runs. Some of them, you'd be like, hold on a second. Is, is that bacon? Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, yes. I have a bacon tattoo. Have you seen it? It's little. I, I got a little so. bacon. Yeah. Yeah. I got a, on my sparata leg. Nice. I got a little bacon tatty. Nice. I often get mistaken for a vegetarian. Uh, you show me bacon. Yeah, yeah. With pride. <laughs> I was trying out these headphones just to see how good they were, and they suck. And I feel bad for anyone I gave them to in the past. Hmm. Oh, well, I mean, we got to try them. I had to sometime. I made this too fat. It doesn't want to stay together. It's okay. It'll be all right. We're gonna get through it, Jordan. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Tell us about your favorite tattoo session mm. and your least favorite tattoo session. Hmm. Okay. Um, I loved my tattoo that I got from Derb because I was living in Dayton, but we were commuting to Columbus to get tattoos. And that was just kind of cool because I had like an hour and a half before to like stick myself up and listen to my hype music and get all, you know excited but then the drive home was always really hard but my my now husband then boyfriend fiance ish would come with me and he'd always drive home thank god but even so you can't get comfortable like you know with the back piece that was just that you're like oh, yeah kind of leaning forward a little in the car yeah. and, oh. um thankful that's why i was so happy bond came with me too she was able to drive back when was, yes oh my god emily in the second trip yeah driving with a fresh back piece not fun or a fresh chest piece for that matter with a seatbelt across it. Right. Um, I, fortunately, I felt like my chest was actually, my sessions were brutal, but my heels were good. Yeah. The sessions on my chest were awful. But I I had two people working on me at once. Yeah, that looked hardcore. Just looking at the pictures, I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, yeah. I recommend it, but I don't recommend it. Right. I mean, you blast it out and get it done. Mm hmm. But yeah, that must have been hard, pretty hardcore. So I don't know if I describe favorite or least favorite, but just memorable and it was great. Probably my least favorite was this last tattoo that I got at Sacred Hand, which I love Sacred Hand and I love Big Niece, but that was just a rough spot. It was my first big tattoo in a really long time. It's just physically traumatic. And, and no one came with me. Like they have a no kids rule at Sacred Hand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my daughter couldn't come uh, and my husband couldn't come with my daughter. And then um, my best friend and like my quote unquote tattoo posse friends who normally would come just for whatever reason couldn't come. And so 
I just soldiered it out on my own, both sessions. And first one was like, the novelty was still high and it was still kind of like, wow, this is really cool. I'm really here. And just, there is something hilarious about me, like a chubby middle-aged mom getting tattooed by a big niece who pretty much tattoos by cursing gangsters. For <laughs> it, it was just kind of hilarious. So the first session, I was pretty high on just the whole experience. But by the second one, I knew what was, I knew how bad it was going to hurt. And, um, and it, it sucked. It just sucked. That second. How that, far apart were your sessions? Um, a month. Okay. So I was fully healed. Yeah. I like giving at least a month in between. Yeah. I, I feel, too. I feel like that's a good window to help with like the post session PTSD. Mm-hmm. Cause like I've had some sessions One where it's about the minimal amount of time. I mean, even like three months is kind of still good. Yeah. Cause I still get PTSD after three months. For I've sure. had, I've I'm had still, some like, sessions in, like, where it's like a few right. weeks before I am even ready to be like touched by another human being. Yeah. Like just it's, I don't need a hug. Yeah. It's, it's cool. <laughs> so now it's the perfect time to get tattooed because you can't hug people right now anyway, right? So true. Six feet different, all that. Uh. I'm taking advantage of that. <laughs> I don't need no stinking hugs. I don't need no hugs from <laughs> no one. I, I miss no hugs. hugs nowhere, no how. Yeah, Who? I need a little bit of hugs. Who needs a hug? I need some hugs. So. There we go. Hey, I think I got it that time. It was too full. You got the it materials happens. burning. It was too full. It wouldn't stay. I, um, my it things have stay closed. Stop working. Oh, that's better. Oh, yeah. Nice. Boop. Boop. Got him. Oh, my God. That just changed a lot. What happened? Did, did you know? Do you guys notice? I definitely noticed a difference. Yeah. Something was loose somewhere. Yeah, that's your head- hmm. my headphone, someone's headphone, hmm. headphone. I well, don't know. Well, our sound just got a whole lot louder, but that's okay. That's all right. That's all right. Test. Test. Or just one? Test. Test. Test again? Test. And we're back. <laughs> Can you hear out of your thing now? It's kind of in and out, but is it? Are you plugged in all the way right here? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's the testing. Background. Testing. That's yeah. good. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think right. that cord's weird. I'm gonna change it out. Okay. And now I got I got nothing. Okay, they're there. <laughs> is it on? <laughs> Too many knobs. Is it on? Too many knobs everywhere. Too many knobs and there's so knobs. many screens and cameras around us. It's there, kind of intense. It is very I had intense. to turn the camera off the TV because it was giving me anxiety watching going back and forth. It was I had to be too mindful. It was keeping me too mindful yeah. of things. Yeah. It's okay. It's all right. I like to be the mind I like to be mindful about them, but I was like, this is distracting. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're gonna end up with a third person in here soon. Yeah, I'm coming to realize we're gonna technology. we're gonna need it in the future a little bit for yeah. sure. We keep saying we need a Jamie. Maybe we'll just have M come on Thursdays and be our shadow. We need person. someone to be able to go to a camera when like mm-hmm. a camera's going down. If something's mm-hmm. going over there or something like that, and someone just kind of finagle things. <laughs> we'll get there. We're getting there. Oh. Thanks everyone for Thanks hanging for the in there. Little by little, we're getting better. You guys are just along for the ride. All right. We all we hope. That if you smoke weed, you're smoking weed with us. Do you know I never in my life had any interest in any kind of audio visual equipment whatsoever? Like you just didn't care. You're just like, I don't like audio and visual stuff. Uh well, like I don't even like sitting down to edit my photos. <laughs> like that's a just had no chore. interest in doing it yourself. I uh, I feel like even you know, it wasn't that long ago. You you're kind of on that page. <laughs> um yeah, now we have a whole studio that we need to learn how to use fluidly. Mm-hmm. I was I was really run I don't know I've been diving into a digital stuff a lot the past few years but I've also simplified the past uh like the past six years been hardcore jumping into digital art the past year I've kind of slowed down on my digital art and like just been focusing on like painting and hand drawing but like doing less digitally and then using that to do more by hand but then I bought my computer and then it just like dove right back in to the digital world and I got so many projects and so many things that I'm constantly learning it's just been the I love it I I, I, all I'm trying to say is I didn't think that it was gonna go as far as it did more digital or organic 
um i would say more more organic and kind of like conan would like sketch stuff out and you know um literally with a pen it's pencil and, and <coughs> notebook you know pretty hardcore like but Derb, I'm pretty sure Derb did Nemo. My, I, I call my koi Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> I always name my tattoos. It seems like I don't know why, but they do, they all have names. But yeah, so my my koi, I'm pretty sure Derb did that on on a computer. Nice. But how long ago was that? We finished that. We did it in 2005, like 2004 into 2005. Oh wow, it looks great then. Thanks. All my tattoos are pretty old. I mean, except because like I said, I took 10 years off. So um, this is, you know, last year, uh, just before the pandemic. Yeah, like 2019, I guess. Um, but the rest of them are pretty old, <laughs> but they just do not see the sun. You know, I keep them covered up. <coughs> sunblock. Sunblock and the just a shirt on, on in the sun, you know, mm -hmm. almost always. <coughs> I, I was asking i'm between the two of us i'm definitely super duper organic in all of my processes like i'm gonna lean towards just drawing it by mm -hmm. hand you know like i'll get references together on procreate but then i'm gonna just draw it by yeah. hand like um where jordan's like just i'm not gonna say completely the opposite he's way more like high tech and digital mm -hmm. um so we're both coming to it with like similar goals in mind but totally different ways of thinking and now it's like Bam, you gotta learn all of this crazy nonsense together. Like to yeah. me, it's nonsense because it's like, oh man, now I gotta like think like in steps and like orders of operations and yeah. Um the and one that, Jordan's halfway to robot legs already. I mean so. he is. it's true. <laughs> Mentally. The, the one that already really legs. the one that really blew my mind was um Meese with the lettering because he just sharpied it on me and then just went. Like it was I mean, I can't even imagine being able to do that and have it be so symmetrical. And so, you know, I mean, he drew a couple of lines, mm -hmm. but then, then he just sharpied it on mm -hmm. me. Yeah. I love drawing on the skin so much. Yeah. So much. I think one, one of the good things, one of the things that makes lettering nice is when you can just like, I always feel like nice lettering should look like music. It mm -hmm. should have a rhythm and it should have a rise and, and a fall, fall a and flow. it should have like an end and like it should have a start and a stop and like a rhythm in between. And your eye should like, if it's intended to, it should loop back around to the beginning mm -hmm. or it, it's just like that rhythm. And he achieves it effortlessly oh, yeah. and to, yeah. to like go. And I, I like the way, like when he does like large pieces and it'll go from like script to block to script yes. to block to script. So he's like, he's creating rhythms horizontally, but just like in the letters he chooses and the way he uses them is like building blocks. He's creating all of these other rhythms mm -hmm. vertically. And then like your eye will follow around his work, <laughs> like a figure eight every time, whether yep. it's one word or whether it's a whole phrase, like if you yeah. just, you can always read it clearly, but when you take a step back, it's like a three-dimensional stair step. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not totally. all lettering artists work with lettering in a way that they're like using lettering as building elements. And I think that's what really sets his lettering in particular apart. Like there are a lot of letterers that, um, you know, you'll see like the graffiti letter next mm -hmm. to the block letter next to like the drippy runny old English letter next to a script next to like a lettering that looks like it was printed on a dollar bill, but he takes all of those elements and then builds them freehand, mind you, yeah. into beautiful flowing balanced and all directional pieces of art. Yeah. You know, it's not just whatever it says. It's like a whole picture built out of those words. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, just the way that the girl is negative space and then the power is like really bold and it's like, oh my God. So some cool. of the best graphic designers in the world can't do that with typography. Right. Like <clears throat> he's, he's special. He's mm -hmm. really gifted and special for what yeah, he does. Yeah, for sure. But now I'm getting, I'm ready to, I got my word tattoo in my black and gray and now I'm ready to get back to pretty pictures and colors. Lots of colors. I'm so excited. All the Spons, colors. Spons, you're gonna kill it. You're I know I like playing it. with colors. Yes. I got a lot of crazy stuff I haven't even shared because it's so like close to finished, but not finished enough. <laughs> so what did you approach Fawn with? What were the words, the keywords for the job mm -hmm. form? I well, I have had the experience of reaching out to an artist 
and describing my like vision and just hearing crickets. And I hate that. That's the worst. Right. And you don't know, like, are they just, be- they love my idea, but they're really busy. They hate my idea and they wouldn't want to do it even if they weren't busy or something in between. And um, so I was so excited when I heard back. It was like Christmas. I was like, oh my God. It took, <laughs> took a couple months to hear back, but I was like, just so excited. So what were my words? I, I describe, I, I read what um, I've been following Fawn for a while and I know what she wants to do. And I knew that it gelled with what I want. And so I just basically tried to use words that showed her that my vision for what I'm imagining is like right in line with her vision for what she wants to do. And so I had a really good feeling, but I still, you know, took a couple months and I was like, Oh, I hope she liked it. I don't know. And I did drop Derp's name. I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> I was like, Derp can tell you I'm a good client. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> I mean, That's what, it helps sometimes. It does. I mean, it does. Sometimes, sometimes some things just to set you apart a little bit can help. If nothing Unfortunately, else, you know, we just, you know we, there's, so there's, sometimes there's a lot of people. Yeah. So things to set you apart, you yeah. know, projects that have just that little, that exactly. little extra something Artists that might talk be like to oh, each yeah. other though. So it is kind of nice to be like, I've been worked on by so and so who you know. Right. Because it can be like, right. hey, this this person cool. Right. Like if someone and sometimes that'll if someone drops like, Fawn's no, name awesome. or something like that. If someone drops someone an artist name to me, I'd probably I'd probably say something to them and probably yeah. ask them a and little I, bit about them. You I know, maybe as the day of, maybe it was when I got the request. Right. And it definitely wasn't doing it as like, oh, oh I have a tattoo from Derb. Like, it wasn't like that at all. It was just more like Derb can tell you what kind of client I am. Like, because mm-hmm. I know, you yep. know, Derb and I worked really well together and he knows I'm cool and, you know, good to work with. And so, yeah, I just figured it couldn't hurt. Now, when I hit Guy up about working on me, I was like, I've been worked on by such and such and such and such and such and such. And when he replied with, I'm familiar with your collection. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> True story. When I um, first had my chest done, we went to Massachusetts 2001 or 2002. I can't remember. And um, Guy asked, like, he saw me walking by and he was like, can I see your chest piece? And I, it was like one of those. And one of my friends just like got her camera and like took a picture so, <laughs> somewhere in my little dorky tattoo scrapbook i have a picture of guy hatches and looking at my chest really intently it's awesome (laughs) (laughs) that's great that's awesome yeah it was pretty funny i remember several years ago at hell city my sister sarah and i were walking around and we come up the stairs and we're getting ready to go in the ballroom and guys coming around and i like hold the door with my foot Mm -hmm. and he walks through and i'm like sarah that was guy Um, and she's like okay <laughs> <laughs> when the tattoo artist that i worship worships guy like in, immediately it becomes like a deity to me too yeah so you know yep for sure it's funny how it's funny how the world works where like there was a time where i was like excited to just like be in the same presence and hold the door for him and then to have the privilege to have where his not, work. not only guy but other artists yeah. as well yeah. that i look up to in the same degree like I remember when Derb introduced me to Russ, we were up in Detroit and Derb was kind of just sitting like a sissy while he was getting his upper arm by his armpit tattooed. I was like, you want some back team, buddy? He was like, yes. <laughs> so I went and got the last bottle from CBS for him. Nice. Um, but afterwards on a break, he like introduced me to Russ and it was just like, the because like Derb and I weren't even close yet. It was mm-hmm. just like, hey, you like, look like you're struggling. You want some back team? He's yes. <laughs> Maybe that's why why and how Derb even remembered my name. I don't know. <laughs> this girl that saved my life with back team. And then blunts later. <laughs> nice. Um, but it's it's really cool to go from like almost like that that starstruck moment of like, oh my God, this is who I've looked up to forever, to like I can just have a conversation with them. You know, we can see each other. I, I proudly wear their work. You know, mm-hmm. it's not just I held the door for that guy. It's right. I, I now have his art forever. And, you know, I can never get lost, stolen, traded, damaged. Like I have that forever. Yeah. That's how I feel about my back piece. Well, all my pieces. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But looking up to Guy for so long. You know, definitely like, you know, deity stats in the art world, yes, you know, my, sure. my whole come up. And, you know, before I tattooed, like my favorite artists, H.R. Geiger, Guy Aitchison mm-hmm. and uh, Alex Gray. Like those are always my favorite artists. And like I was looking at guys like paintings as well, you know, mm-hmm. like that was like huge <clears throat> was just looking at like bioorganic paintings. Uh-huh. I wasn't looking up tattoos a ton. I was looking up bioorganic shit. That was not that. 
just wasn't really introduced to the bioorganic world. Mm -hmm. But still, it wasn't even like the bioorganic paintings I'm seeing now from him. Like I was seeing totally different stuff back then. Guy's work's definitely evolved and like all along, it's like it's his imagination is growing and evolving and changing. So is mine. Yeah. <laughs> like right. my daydreams are evolving and getting more elaborate and more like more, more is being pulled from that other realm that we always talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and it's cool to see that like, as guys always pushing the envelope, he's dancing and playing in the same realms. Like it's, a, it's like the magical mashup of like visionary meets organic meets mechanical meets guy's magic brain right with like <laughs> touch of realism so it's like you're just taking like abstract things and turning them real all believable like just taking time. pure chaos and turning it into something real you mm -hmm. know make these flowy scribbles and now let's make those flowy scribbles look like they're a real thing yeah mm -hmm. like they're believable in there or like not just there but like into something like it makes it almost sound Solid, too simple to say it like right, that. Like yeah, we just no, take material, these ripples like, that don't exist and make them exist. Like look like life. Like literally look like a new form of life. Hmm. And using all form, like using light to make it happen. He's magic. Yeah. Definitely. Shout out to Guy Aitchison. <laughs> reinventing the tattoo. But, but reinventing like, yeah, the like, tattoo. Yeah, shout, shout out to Guy, but like I mean all by Have you downloaded <laughs> the app yet? All guy, all uh <laughs> all guy all the time. All, no, no. <laughs> all artists who are doing stuff like that. Like, that's just what I love about bioorganic art in general. Yeah. yeah. All the plugs, all yeah. the shameless plugs. <laughs> We're not sponsored by, but <laughs> inspired by. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's even better. Yeah. What? <clears throat> this episode inspired by Guy Yeah, Hitchison. inspired by, yeah. Guy Aitchison and Girl Power. Yeah. It's a good combo. He's a girl dad. He'd appreciate that. So when Michelle worked on you, did you get to hang out? Um, it was that guy con convention. So there was just so. no, it was just I mean, like, they were sharing a booth. So he was there and, you know, but busy. Yeah. yeah. He was doing his thing. And, but they did invite us uh, the second year after. So I got tattooed by her two years in a row. The second year they invited us back to like a, she had like a, um, an art showing in her hotel, in their hotel suite that mm -hmm. night. And so we got to go and like, we felt like we were partying with the real true rock stars. <laughs> it was like all the big name artists were there. It was pretty cool. Nice. It was like, and we were just in there like passing joints. <laughs> like it was awesome. <laughs> It still feels like that sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I'll just be standing in a circle of people and it's like, man, when you're actually surrounded by the people you look up to, it's a pretty <laughs> special feeling. Yeah, I, I definitely don't take it for granted. I, I hope I hope hope I don't come across as, as I'm bragging. I just like no. to celebrate because yeah. um not everybody has the opportunity to be surrounded by like the legends that they look up to. Mm -hmm. Like I always talk to other people that aren't in the tattoo community and I'll, I'll like try to compare the people that I work with and know to like rock stars that are the, in the industry. Yeah. And it, you, I mean, you can tell people, but it's not really the same. Right. Like there's no, there's no comparing it unless yeah. you're like in the tattoo community and you really know who these people are. If you just have tattoos, that's, that's fine. But once yeah. you're like actually like, part, part of the community, then. Yeah. Um, it's all right though. It's all right though. It's like an, if you know, you know, type thing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like that you got these fucking gems that, you know, just gotta like uncover and you look in this little cave and you just got these, fucking gems that shine so fucking bright mm -hmm. like just amazing tattooers so it's crazy in the art world that we so, some of these amazing tattooers don't get the like the i'm not saying like not like guy guys become he's become a huge name and like so many artists know him but in terms of like like the fine art community and all that and like the paintings that are getting sold for like you know anywhere from you know just just not even because they're worth fifty thousand to a million dollars. You know, they're getting sold because that's just the art community that's selling it. But mm -hmm. that, are, you know, tattooing and like a lot of the art of tattooing hasn't been included in that community. It's starting to now. So though. like it is, Finally. it is. It's thank thank goodness, and people are getting recognized for it. But it's wild seeing people that are best artists I've ever seen at anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of them are tattoo artists, 
and you just expect them to be making millions from painting that good you know just like unachievable <laughs> painting you know they're doing <laughs> like not really because anything's achievable but at the same time you just look at it and you're like wow mm -hmm. <laughs> i would have never thought to that's do it where that i'm way. like wizard exactly yeah wizard another realm you're talking to aliens but i love that i love like i don't know i love that it's almost kind of a secret too like it needs to be out there mm -hmm. but i love that like if you know you know there is something to be said for things that are not fully mainstream and you know they are like a little bit more on the fringe and you, you have to know like or know someone to get initiated and in. you know i mean mm -hmm. there's some tattoo was like that for me for a really long time you know i really liked it because it was sort of forbidden and you know rebellious and but then once i started collecting like fine art i it, that kind of right. element of it went away for me but i still i mean i don't know if i love how mainstream they are <laughs> like mm -hmm. you know. i wonder if anyone will ever do a tattoo for million dollars Hmm. you know what i mean like i wonder if like I it'll ever be valued it. like some other artist valued like hmm. that but the other side of it is that like it's really one of the most impermanent arts as well like mm -hmm. we think about it as being the most permanent art because it's like our lifespan but really like it's no painting is going to outlive you yeah like, a painting an is oil painting is definitely going to live it might yeah. chip but it's going to outlive you like yeah if it's not ruined by mm -hmm. somebody you know physically if it's just on a wall for that long and that wall is still there that mm -hmm. long might be covered in dust but that painting's still going to be there it is funny i feel like 500 about years later before. we're looking at da vinci paintings and stuff so yeah. like we talk about how permanent tattoos are and tattoos are forever but they're really in the grand scheme of things not they're only permanent to the wearer yeah you know and that's that's the magic thing about a tattoo is it can't be bought stolen broken damaged like it's the only possession that is you. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing that you have. It is you. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't have a tattoo, you it's it's part of you. Yeah. You can't yep. you can't lose it. You can't trade it. And then you can't hand it down to anybody. It's 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 you and only you. It's it's the thing that makes tattoos special. Mm -hmm. It is totally unique. It's, right it's now, only I think worth as much as you've paid for it and the, the time and pain you've put into it, but you can't transfer that. It's not worth a dollar to anybody else. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I just think about where, uh, you know, bringing, bringing, it, bringing tattooing into the other art communities and having it being seen as a, just as legitimate as any other fine art. And I just wonder if anyone will like I, I just feel like it's inevitable that artists will eventually like there's going to be some people out there charging stupid amounts, you know, that are just going to there are people out there right now charging stupid mm -hmm. amounts and then they're just going to drive it up till they're doing $10,000 sessions, you know, and like that right now that sounds ridiculous. I just wonder if that's going to become some normal because right now that would make right now the most like the best time to, to have get like, availability it. or like have the availability to get into the artists that you want to before they start going like ten thousand dollars plus mm -hmm. i don't i don't think that needs to happen i think tattoo artists i've we heard all of do artists really well i just think like inevitably there's going to be some assholes that'll drive the art price way up because right. that's exactly what happens with the painting community right is that as soon as you know you could do a painting in 10 minutes and you can go and sell it for fucking ten dollars to someone or you can bring that painting to a gallery and some rich person values it for ten thousand dollars now that painting automatically no matter what it's worth ten thousand dollars because someone just paid ten thousand right. dollars for it and that's all that creates value when it comes to art yeah it does the other thing about fine art traditional fine art though is it a lot of times it raises in value posthumously right like once the artist passes but with tattoo there is no more art once the artist passes so yeah. it's kind of difference that's why i like to paint too yeah. i like to have yeah i like to have some permanent art as well as yeah. the imper permanent art that i create <clears throat> when you create your art on an organic substance, it is going to decay eventually. Do you collect any other art besides your tattoos? Hmm. I mean, sometimes I like a lot of times when I travel, I'll try to get a piece of street art. Um, we have some amazing street art that we got in New York City that where these artists just do incredible things with like spray can and like a, a, can, a paint can lid mm -hmm. and a newspaper, a crinkled up newspaper. And they just do these amazing, like, and then like a, um, a scraper and they build like the city. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love those so much. And so we'll watch them do it live. And like, I'll tell them I want this and this and this. And then, so I'll, I'll collect like street art like that. I have street art from Israel that I love. I have street art from, um, London. Um, 
but yeah so like that kind of like i like i like art as a souvenir when i travel but not anything worthwhile i mean <clears throat> not like any fine art that's i did i bought a painting once oh god on a honeymoon in maui in like 95 by christian Rees lawson do you know that name mm-hmm. at all so i'm gonna bring his book it's kind of cheesy it's very 90s but it's like the um if you can picture like the tropical underwater scene where Mm -hmm. you see waves and dolphins jumping out of the water and sunsets but then under the water you see the coral reef and all the fish and turtles and everything it's kind of a little cheesy and kitschy Mm -hmm. but i do still love it and um i could see i just started a kraken torso piece that is kind of like that same way where you can see like the line of the water splashing and the waves yeah Yeah, i'm I'm inspired by those 90s uh yeah there's a lot there's a lot of color and there's a lot of life and Mm -hmm. there's a lot of vibrancy anyway i I have a i I did buy one of his painting ones that was a goofy move on my first first honeymoon (laughs) but now i don't know where that painting ended up i lost it in the divorce so very very sadly it was not a permanent piece of art for me (laughs) but it was awesome nice yeah i need to start collecting original original art Mm -hmm. that's for sure i i'm i'm really excited about full of paintings right now mostly prints growing between my glass collection i've been collecting glass for several years now um, I'm pretty proud of that collection, but like that's inspiration. Cause like, mm-hmm. I'll look into like the glass marbles and I'll look into like these knobs that are on these functional pieces mm-hmm. that I have. And they're like tiny little galaxies, Oh yeah, you know, and the kind of art that I, I collect, like the kind of glass art that I collect. If you were to like, look at these like fumicello little vortex marbles mm-hmm. and then stare at like an Alex Gray painting, it's like, oh, it's the same universe. Yeah. Only tiny. <laughs> Um, so I get like so excited and like inspired to create new like realms based on mm-hmm. the, the, these little things that other artists have made, you know? Yeah. It, there's something so magic about glass art and the, the patience it takes to achieve the, the art that is within my taste. Um, but I feel like it, it just makes my tattoos so much more like unbelievable, but at the same time, like. You couldn't understand how a realm made out of like gas swirling together with Mm -hmm. weird shapes. You wouldn't understand how that would work if you couldn't just like pick it up and like look at it from all angles. And like, you know, you couldn't draw that freehand if you hadn't stared into it. You know, it's kind of like when Jordan plays in VR. It's like, again, I'm the analog version of what Jordan's playing and where you build like these big things from the inside out. I look from the outside in. Nice. It's cool. Two different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah, but I love, like, right now, while I'm slowing down on my own tattoo collecting, I really like hmm, contributing to the artists the same way. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I just feel compelled. Like, my clients are incredibly good to me, so I feel like any chance I have to, like, basically, the, the faster I can get the money out of my hand and into the hand of another artist, the more sense the universe makes to me. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, oh, I have this money that there should be in somebody else's hand besides mine. (laughs) Art. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I want to start collecting. I think it's a great thing. I think it's good to support artists, but I need to start selling my pieces. I I don't, I think I've sold like one or two original paintings that I've ever made. (laughs) I just like holding on to them. I've given a lot away. I have given a lot I away. I am way more likely to give my art away than some sell have been it. destroyed. Some have been destroyed. Oh. But I also like, I don't know. I like building the collection until I have too much. And once I have too much, then it's like time to sell. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of pieces that I think I want to go and get. There there are two in particular that I, I should have already had made, but I want to start doing like all of the 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 new original work that i make i want to do runs of like five and either do them on a g clay print or print them on aluminum Mm. so it will be like five and only five and that's it and then i can go in and retouch them make them original that way that's a great idea but that way i can still be stingy with my originals but like people that seriously want to collect my work can you know i don't want to have to i just you know I don't want to spend the time to send out a $10 print. I'm lazy. Like I'd rather roll a blunt than 
roll a print and put it in a packing tube (laughs) if i can just be honest like i'd really rather sell like to have to do dozens and dozens and dozens dozens of ten dollar you know twenty dollar prints for yeah uh, but they'd be like nice ready to hang like replicas that like in some cases like if i took like some of my really glowy paintings and printed those on aluminum and then put like a uh, like a light that was mounted above them like a you know like mm-hmm. the little like the painting yeah. lights mm-hmm. like if, if it came like that already illuminated i feel like that would probably be cooler than the original painting and you number them so people know it's yeah yeah part of a select yep. lot yeah yep. it'd be like be cool. either three or five and that's it yeah like keep them real low numbers mm-hmm. and that way people that really want my work will have a chance to have it and it'll be you know I, I don't know I guess I don't really worry about like longevity of value for resale I just want people to have my work that like love it mm-hmm. like I don't want to sell mm-hmm. a poster to just be tucked in the corner I'd rather sell something that's like appreciated like you know like your atom print here like that's that's hanging there and we enjoy that as much as if it were the original you know I want that's how I want my work to be presented in people's homes right. that's really beautiful and then I always imagine like when I look at these paint when I look at like a painting like that I'm like man what if it was the original mm-hmm. like the power that an original painting has is just so much more than a print as well but it's so nice to have this little window mm-hmm. I love I love this little window there like it's, <laughs> yeah because now it's forever there I kind of walk past all the time I barely like I'll look at it when I'm just sitting and doing sitting and doing nothing and that's when I appreciate it the most is that like instead of like looking at a white wall I can just like fade off into this little little portal into another world Mm -hmm. that someone spent so much time you know and energy putting into it and being an artist knowing what it takes to you know to do it and the imagination and just like the vision the fun process that it is it's just it's kind of cool i never noticed it before but that little volcano right there like off from the middle is super similar to the volcanoes in your underarm it totally it is. could be like part of the same realm i think he's robot been, i think adam's been loving the volcanoes lately robot dinosaurs in the same realm as the trippy mushroom there's lizard. a few of his paintings that got a cool little volcano in them now it's pieces hmm. at least i think so i got a volcano coming up in this back piece that i'm working on nice we're almost to the volcano part of it Mm -hmm. yep and then i've got a tropical landscape with a volcano you know i've been doing those that i posted that piece recently that has the um the arc from the steel smelting it's like the red glow so i started another that was steel smelting and then i just started a welding themed sleeve so it'll Hmm. have a bright yellow arc and then I've got the two volcanoes. Nice. So those like orange, red, I explosive glows. I love making I love them. Those. And I've got a few of them on my plate at the same time. And That's it's very I, try, fun. I want to use those as much as I can. Yeah, it's fun. Project. Build uh, it backwards. Dark to light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Don't tattoo the lava. Save that for last. Don't tattoo the lava. <laughs> yeah, Tat- leave that. Don't be, let that be the like splatters. the yellow. Tattoo around the splatter. <laughs> I feel that. But we're cutting on two hours, seven minutes now. Yeah. It's yeah probably I, think, I feel like we're doing pretty good here. Close to time to day. start wrapping up here pretty soon. But yeah, this wrapping has been, up pretty soon. This has been pretty good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. You definitely have to come back on with us. I'd love like it. Maybe we'll have you on if, if we could wor- work it out. Um, maybe like the day after a session, or maybe we yeah. could even do like session grab some footage of us working and mm-hmm. include that in an episode it would be oh, really yeah. nice to yeah start let's do that let's do that well i'll try to help out we'll see what those dates are we'll get there that's awesome that. i think that would be cool if i had the opportunity i want to use these cameras as much as possible yeah so i got the message while we were sitting here uh our package came our second arm oh yeah so, so our next episode we're gonna have horizontal arms for our microphones that come out this way Ooh. Less obstructive in the picture. Nice. And a plasma ball. And yeah, a plasma ball. That's out there right now. Uh, and a plasma ball. Out here. <laughs> that's a reason to come back just that's in a, and of right. itself. I mean, We're going to all have to touch the, the plasma, plasma ball. ball. Yeah. That'll be like how we start. When our powers unite. <laughs> powers of the podcast unite. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's oh, all about. It's this it's show is perfect. gonna turn into like the five-year-old's technical playland. That's all. Technological I, that's all playland. I wanted in the first place. It's just uh, fair. this was my circuit. So the more I can wiggle that in here, fair. I like it. I like it. The more I can wiggle it on in. 
All right. Are you out there in internet land, Sandy? I am here in the interwebs. I don't know. She's there. We get to Are you able to hear me? That's all right. If she is there, Sandy, we can't hear you, but that's all right. We're going to, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll do our, we'll do our sign off. Well, thanks everyone for listening. And uh, Fawn, where can we find you? Um, you can find me at Fawn underscore Baker on Instagram. Oh, she's here. Okay. Um, or you can find us at Tattoo Collecting 101 on Instagram. Um, we try to go live on there also. Yep. You can find us when we, when we were on, we're on Instagram live right now. If you're following us from the tattoo collecting one oh one, you're not going to get the same footage as the foot go to reinventing the tattoo.com or tattoo collecting dot one or wait, tattoo collecting one oh one dot com. Right. Or the tattoo tattoo collecting.com. Sorry. I haven't, I haven't said it out loud in a week. Tattoo collecting. Tattoo collecting.com will have the actual videos and the real sound quality. If you're watching it from Instagram, you're going to be having, um, it's gonna it's be an iPad, iPad in the quality. corner of the room. Yeah, it's just an iPad. but it's all right. Yeah, we're getting there. I just like to. But thanks for everybody. joining us, guys, and um, thank you yeah. again, Laura. For, thank you for, for having me. Here. This yeah. was so fun. This was awesome. Yeah, I had a lot of fun talking to you. Cool. Definitely check her out. The tattoo doula. Yeah, or the tattoo, or just tattoo. Tattoo doula at, at, at tattoo doula on on Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. And where can we find you, Jordan? Um, you can find me at Jordan Rookus Tattoo on Instagram. Um, you can check my portfolio out there, um, tattoo artist, all that. If you've been listening, you already know that. <laughs> if you made it this far. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Sandy's back. Yep. And you, you wanna... can, and if you want to book with me, Jordan Rookus Tattoo.com. All Thank the dot coms. Hey, Sandy. Hey, I'm not sure. Tell us what's coming up over the next few days. <laughs> can you guys hear me now? Maybe. Uh -oh. Hmm. Hmm. We still can't hear Sandy. All right. Well, there is a live paint jam with Nick Baxter on Sunday. This Sunday at 9 p.m., you're going to want to be there. Live paint jam with Nick Baxter. That is like opportunity mm -hmm. central. Like that's some Nick Baxter is how I learned to oil paint, actually. His uh, sharp focus of um, sharp focus and realism oil painting book was the first when I wanted to jump into I was acrylic painting for a while before mm -hmm. that but when I want when I wanted to jump into oils I got his book when I was into reinventing yep because that's uh you know I was referred to it by guy and then yep. got into that and that just started me on an awesome path of oil painting and falling in love with that and I barely touch acrylics anymore <laughs> acrylics, acrylics are nice for the um quick drying. collaborative yeah the quick drying collaborative process um, outside of that, I feel like oils are just the most organic. You can manipulate them the most. I'm addicted the most to the smell. Giving. The smell is, it's, it's magic. I just, I feel like once the smell, it's like an incense. Once the smell's in the air, it mm -hmm. like creates the space for me. Mm -hmm. Like now I'm like in oil painting central, you know, I smell the mineral spirits, linseed oil, liquid. After a while I get a headache, but I'm like, I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't like it, but I, I still like it. I like the smell. Do you post your well, no. um, fine art to Instagram? Um, yeah, I try to keep like a lot of the painting stuff on uh, um, my, I didn't even say this one, but uh, the Death by Cuttlefish is my other personal page. But I that's told my, you. That's my art. <laughs> that's my <laughs> art page. Um, that's not tattoo Follow. related. Yep. So Death by Cuttlefish, Death underscore by underscore Cuttlefish. Cuttlefish. Cuddlefash. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, accent that fast. is, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, All right. Yep. Yeah, check out paintings there, but also on my Instagram, my Jordan Rook is tattoo. I do post a lot of them on there. It's just a lot more sporadic. Mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Well, well sweet. thanks. We're guys. signed off, Sandy. If you're there, continue to do your thing. Go do, do, do. The cameras. We'll see you next week. Bye. Laura. Bye.